Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Professor, for this beautiful lecture. Maybe somebody have some comments. Professor Cherian, maybe you some have some comments. This report. One microphone. Well, as usual, uh, excellent uh, and uh, path breaking approaches uh, to craniopharyngioma. I was just seeing the, always when I come to Tumen, I see improvement over improvement from what was previous. So excellent. I mean, I can really say that this is world-class or maybe leading. Group. So proud of your work, Albert, and uh, a lot of things to see from here and adapt back at home. So congratulations and I I hope I'll see you soon. Thank you very much for this comment. I think every resident proud of the work of Albert Stefanov. Okay, so the uh, next speaker will be 
the Christian Kumar Bansal, Senior Neurosurgeon, Narayana Multi Specialty Hospital, uh, Jaipur, India. His report will be about from micro microscope to exoscope, changing charting. Kumar Bansan, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Yeah, first of all, I must apologize. Uh, can you can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well, but unfortunately, we can see your screen. Uh, Oh, okay, I will share the screen. Uh, first of all, can you see my face? My uh... Yes, we can see your face very well. Okay, so uh, first of all, I must apologize from uh, Professor Albert Sufenov as I could not come because of some uh, local problems. But I must thank you very much him because he is a very good friend of us and uh, for inviting me to the first uh, international exoscopic conference. And as the uh, IP has also said uh, very well that uh, it's uh, the development of the exoscope, what he started actually in 2016, because we are also good friends from uh, almost more than 10 years now. And whenever uh, uh, we make a conference in uh, uh, Jaipur, India, the IP is always ready to come and he participated very well in uh, contributing the academic waste and uh, teaching uh, everyone about the basic things and he is very much enthusiast, uh, enthusiastic about uh, developing new things. So I know because we have common friends uh, that when he started developing in the uh, uh, Alicante, as he told uh, that's uh, in 16 years ago, uh, 2016, sorry. And uh, um, I have seen him uh, how hard he is working from India to Nepal and then come back to India. He has uh, participated very well. As well as Professor Sufiano, I saw this wonderful surgery and he is a wonderful academician and always uh, try to uh, do this uh, new things and uh, applying people. And uh, I, I fully agree to the both Albert and uh, this uh, IP that we should uh, keep on learning new things, not only learning new things, but we should keep on uh, developing uh, new things every time whenever we do some operations or when you use some instrument then at the same time we should find out where we had where we are lacking what things is lacking so we should uh, come on with the new things uh, and to ch change the old ones all those and everything uh, but the same thing has to be done with a different uh, way like uh, this uh, the old winners say that i don't do different things i do things differently uh, things in the advanced way and you know the time is changing technology is changing so we are going to see the, the uh, a sea change in the world so this is the I, I warm welcome you from the uh, city of uh, pink city of India, which is actually much, much warmer than the human. I know that human is freezing and I, I really appreciate that you people work so hard there in this uh, uh, cold weather and doing always great things. So. I, can, I, I think you can see this, uh, my screen. Yes, we can see your screen. Exoscope, VS microscope, changing yeah, paradigm. Changing, changing paradigm. So, uh, um, this, this, uh, the th as the things are changing from the um, open uh, naked eye neurosurgery to then to the microscope and then to the endoscope and then to the exoscope. 
so uh, the endoscope is basically i'm going to teach uh, tell about some basic things about the uh, endoscope as we know that uh, this is a this is basically a camera. So this is an extra corporeal telescope, basically. So um, whenever there is a new instrument is being developed and comes in the market, people and the companies come to us and sell us, they teach us and request us to use it. But you know, as a basic human nature, as IP said just before that every time we try to resist the learning new things, we think that the, we are very good with the old ones, like few people you see that they are doing the same thing with the same instrument from last four decades or three decades and five decades. Now uh, the multiple endoscope systems are available and I, I know that uh, the new instrument which is going to come with the eyepiece company will be far better than these ones not only in the optics but also in the um, comfortability as well as the uh, operating facilities. So these uh, uh, exoscopes are being marketed now in the Carl, by the Carl Storch, Carl Jais, and uh, Synapti, and the Olympus uh, is the Orbi, which they say is the 4K exoscope. So the next generation exoscope contains the 4K, as I just told, 3D displays. The light filters are for uh, 5 ALA, as well as Indosign video angiography. They have pneumatic arms, adjustable operative settings, multi-screen output, longer focus distance, and a greater magnification power. And if uh, this uh, exoscope, uh, if we uh, uh, collaborate or we integrate it with the robot, then uh, the life uh, becomes more easier for us. So the most important in any of the camera, you know, is the exoscope uh, or endoscope or microscope is the lens and the clarity and the optics. So the optics uh, uh, is very, very important. And uh, these the these systems, they have first, uh, the Orbi is having the 4K HD clarity. They are composed of two metal oxide semiconductor cameras. This uh, uh, having a resolution of more than 3840 into 2160 pixels. So these cameras have an individual counterbalance arm, which is um, can be traditional, traditionally dead man uh, switch, and that can control uh, the zoom and focus uh, both the things. So that this uh, the under the optics, the system creates its image via 3D line by line mode that can be displayed in compatible 3D monitors that use the same resolution as the capturing cameras. So the optical and digital zooming can be performed either by a hand or by a foot switch. But the magnification can range from uh, 1.1 to 25, 26 times in the exoscope. And uh, while using the zooming, the ratio is up to 12 times. The six times is optical zooming and two times is the digital zooming. So it becomes the 12 times. Though the exoscope has a focal length a uh, little more than the microscope and focus can be adjusted by the exoscope headpiece and uh, using a foot pedal. And the view field of view for the exoscope is a little bigger than the microscope. So the question comes, what's the need to have a new machine? So why we are trying to develop new toys every time and then which we are using for years we have started playing with the, some instruments and learned that made ourselves perfect in that. And by the time a new instrument comes and the people say that this is better than the previous one. This gives you more magnification. That gives you more clarity. This gives you more depth perception and so on. So for us, every time it is difficult to learn new technology. But most of the people think, but this is an old thing. We should keep on learning new things and the instruments because we know that every machine has a learning curve this is the point where we have the resistance in our brain so the um, same uh, the uh, because because the learning curve every machine and every person has a learning curve so uh, there are few people those who are very good learner and get acquainted with it uh, very easily but there are very few people also those who takes the long time to develop the same skills so every machine and every learner has a different uh, learning curve. 
so moreover the usability of the instrument also makes us uh, learning better was even when you buy a new car you will take some days to get used to it so the same thing happens with you when you be, uh, when you buy new instruments or new instruments comes to uh, in your or but the marriage of technology and the basic sciences and anatomy is giving or producing wonders in the field of technology because we know the anatomy and we know the basic medical science and the technology is being advanced by the engineers so they can tell us and helping us doctors to perform the better and safe operations so but but we need what we need is the better ergonomics so if we are operating for 4 5 hours or 6 hours or 7 hours we should not get tired we should not be in an awkward position and then at the end of the day we are um, shrugging our shoulders or going to physiotherapy department uh, to get relieved of our pain because we are standing in a one position with the microscope for for many hours and then other thing is that is the better definition of the operating field so we need only two things for our uh, life to be better but before the 3d 4k and all these the 5d is important for all of us and we know and i know that those who are making this thing they are the wonderful surgeons like professor sufyanov and professor i picherian the 5d uh, consists of the design as we uh, design our uh, surgical uh, treatment in a one particular patient, then we should describe it beforehand in our mind, or at least, uh, uh, if if not in mind, we can do it in on the paper that we what we are going to do, and then the complete dedication we should give our hundred percent during the surgery, and during the surgery the decision making is also very important, and then ultimately end of the day we should deliver the good results. So these five Ds, what I say is more important than the three day three D. Even if uh, you are not used to do with the new technology, you are using the old technology, but you can do all these things, it's still good because at the end of the day, we need uh, good results for the patient. So the freedom of movement and ergonomics of the instrument is very, very important for all, all of us neurosurgeons. So whether it is a microscope, endoscope or endoscope. So the use of microscope requires the surgeons look directly through and the, we are touching our face to the machine so this is uh, this this is a um, interface has been overcome due to the introduction of this uh, three dimensional uh, 3d imaging exoscopes so the exoscopes have been the latest edition you know that uh, ip has just told and it's coming up and the uh, advancements and the newer versions will keep on coming and the IP said that uh, we are going to have the very soon the glasses which we can wear. There is no need of uh, even uh, having the uh, screens. And these glasses, are, Apple glasses, are being connected with the Bluetooth or with the Wi-Fi to the exoscope, and you can operate like that. It's better than even robot, I can say. So, so this is being uh, a bridge between the operating microscope and endoscope. So the developing, development of the 3D endoscope uh, is a marvelous uh, technological innovation in modern surgical practice, which we can see uh, till date, is uh, continues to renew itself, uh, uh, as I told, uh, with the 3D high, D, uh, high HD definition visualization endoscope of the most recent is the 3D 4K endoscope. So the endoscope is a novel high definition digital camera system, basically and there is a limited evidence signifying the use of endoscopic devices in microscope microsurgery although there are many articles i saw on the net but you can see the uh, quality uh, which the microscope is producing and which endoscope is producing how much enlarged is this with the microscope you can have a, a only nine centimeter deep field three centimeter opening field and two centimeter of the working field because of the narrow corridor and uh, with the endoscope, we can have the even the chinks, uh, chicken wing, wing vessel, which is a one millimeter thick. And we are using uh, uh, 12 sutures, 12 O sutures. And you can put the 12 inter uh, 20 interrupted sutures at the same time with the endoscope, much better than the microscope. 
So if we see the optics and the making of the microscope exoscope, we can clearly see that the exoscope has a better depth of uh, perception. The focal length is a, a bit better and the view is bigger than the endoscope. So uh, the exoscope system in neurosurgery, if we compare uh, the with the standard operating microscope, I found a study which was found, done in operating operative neurosurgery in 2019. They assess the prototype of uh, 3D exoscope, um, the, which was made in 2015 by the Asculap, and as a neurosurgical visualization device in comparison to a standard operating microscope. So they did a <coughs> terrenal approach was uh, performed in 3D ETFX uh, specimens, uh, and standard operating microscope was compared to a 3D exoscope, which was actually prototype. The dimensions uh, like visual field, magnification, illumination, ergonomics, depth effect, and 3D impression were compared. So they came out with the results that the structures of interest could be clearly visualized by both the devices. The magnification showed similar results. The exoscope had more magnification potential. This is very important. Whereas the visual quality got worse in higher magnification levels. The illumination showed better results in microscope. The surgeons felt more comfortable with the 3D exoscope concerning ergonomics. So the depth effect of the 3D impression showed similar results. None of the surgeons felt uncomfortable by the uh, use of exoscope. So they concluded in their article uh, that the operating microscope is the gold standard uh, visualization tool in neurosurgery because of its illumination, stereoscopy and magnification. But nevertheless, the, it uh, causes ergonomics problems. The prototype of 3D exoscope showed comparable features in visual field, stereoscopic impression, and magnification, with the clear benefit concerning the ergonomics possibilities. So the exoscopes are safe and effective alternatives, and they have uh, concluded concluded the to the adjunct to the existing binocular surgical microscope for brain tumor, skull based surgery, anosm clapping, both cervical and lumbar complex spine surgeries that probably will open a new era in the field of uh, new tools and techno techniques in the new surgery. So there are, I found another article, the use of exoscope uh, in neurosurgery, the overview of current literature of the intraoperative use in brain and spine surgery. So they, this paper was published uh, just a year before uh, in the clinical medicine 2022 January. It was published online, uh, so these, uh, are these authors, they have uh, done the PubMed research and ovid embrace search to identify the papers which includes the surgical experience uh, with the exoscope in neurosurgery. So they followed the PRISMA guidelines uh, um, by preferred reporting items and systemic reviews and meta-analysis. So the result was the total 86 articles they found and in them the 1711 cases were included and analyzed in this review. Out of these 86 papers included uh, 74, means 86% were published in the last five years. Out of these 1711 surgical procedures, almost 90% were performed in the operating room, whereas 10% were performed in, performed in the laboratory on the cadavers. So in more detail, 72% or you can say the one uh, three fourth of were reported as brain surgeries and 16% and 9% reported as spine and peripheral nerve surgery. So considering only the clinical C's, the overall surgical complication rate was 2.6% during the use of exoscope. These patients experienced complications profiles similar to that underwent the same treatments with the operating microscope. The overall switch incidence rate from exoscope uh, to the microscope was only 5.8%. So in this uh, article, they concluded the exoscope seems to be a safe alternative compared to the already existing operating microscope for the most common brain and spinal processes with several advantages that have been reached, such as an easier simplicity of use and a better 3D vision and magnification of the surgical field. Moreover, it offers the Opportunity of better interaction with the members of the surgical staff as your hands and face is free. So, and you can look around everywhere. And all these points set the first step of subsequent and short term changes in the field of neurosurgery and offer new educational possibilities for young 
neurosurgery uh, residents. So in this review, the aims to show the advantage and disadvantage of the new tool used in uh, neurosurgery, reporting experiences uh, with the and summarizing the current literature without uh, drawing unique technical conclusions, as we believe it is too early uh, at this moment because it's not available in many of these centers. Only few centers, lucky centers, can have that and using this. So uh, I found another article where they have uh, done the comparative uh, learning curves of microscope versus exoscope, which was actually a preclinical randomized crossover non inferiority study. So in this, they use the, in this study, they use the uh, learning curve plateau uh, and uh, rate of the newer uh, uh, neurosurgeons using an Olympus or by exoscope compared to an operating microscope, which was uh, Carl Zeiss Kinova 900. This was published also in the uh, year before in 2022 in Frontiers of Neurosurgery. So uh, in their method, they did is the preclinical randomized crossover in known inferiority trial assess the performance of the 17 new younger neurosurgeons and seven expert surgeons completing the microsurgical grape dissection task. Um, they made a star like uh, stars the limit. Their, their task was the stars at the limit. So the standardized star was drawn on a grape using a stencil with a five millimeter edge. The participants cut the star and peeled the star shaped uh, skin off the grape with the micro seizures and forceps while minimizing damage to the grape flesh. So the participants repeated the task 20 times uh, consecutively for each optical device. So the learning was assessed using model function such as Weeble function and uh, the cognitive workload was assessed with the NASA task load index. So uh, this is the uh, with the microscope and this is with the endoscope, uh, exoscope, sorry. They uh, drawn a stencil of the star on the grape and the the peel was uh, peeled off without damaging the um, flesh. And this the similar procedure was done under the uh, Jais microscope. So they resulted that 17 uh, younger or novice uh, neurosurgeons out of them, 12 uh, were male and five females. Uh, and six expert surgeons uh, who were uh, median age, uh, years of training was 10 years um, were recruited. So the stars the limit was validated using a performance score that gave a threshold of expert performance of 70 from 0 to 100. I'm sorry, we can hear you. Can't hear you. Can you hear me? Rishan Kumar Bansal, can you hear me? <coughs> okay. Respect. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. The yeah. Cognitive... Is, Unfortunately, I'm... now we can see your screen. Please share share with us with your screen. You cannot see my screen? No. Uh, before this time, we see everything very good, very well, but now we can see. No. Just one second. Okay. Can you share that? No. You can see now? Yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect. Everything okay, is okay. Thank you. thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, the I'm not taking longer, I hope it's okay. The time uh, there is no time limit now, uh, Miss. I mean, I'm in the time. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Okay. It's a very no, it's... good literature review. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it's only uh, four or five slides more. Like, so the um, cognitive workload uh, by the NASA um, uh, this thing uh, tech TLX was higher with the for the orbi this uh, exoscope. The novices preferred the freedom of movement and the ergonomics of the orbi, but preferred the visualization of the microscope. So they concluded uh, this is the first study to quantify the ORBI learning curve and the first randomized control trial to compare the ORBI learning curve and that of the microscope. So the plateau performance and the learning rate of the ORBI are significantly non-inferior to those of the microscope in a preclinical grave dissection task. So this study also supports the ergonomics of the ORBI as reported in preliminary observational studies and highlights visualization as a focus for further development. So uh, there are so many studies I found on the net. Uh, the very important is the uh, from the boss here only uh, um, 
Professor Albert Sufia now. I found this literature very latest in the neurosurgical focus video in 2024, January, just a few days old only. Exoscopic removal of the fourth ventricle coronal plexus papilloma with the use of a midline suboccipital osteoplastic craniotomy. So the coronal plexus papilloma is a relatively rare vascular tumors. In this video, the authors represent a periodic patient who underwent the exoscopic removal of the fourth ventricle cord plexus papilloma with the use of a midline uh, standard suboccipital craniotomy. The exoscope in the fourth ventricle lesion helps to remove the visualization in all directions with the surgeons being made to maintain a comfortable position throughout the procedure. In addition, the midline suboccipital craniotomy helps to reduce the potential risk of complication in particular, the CSF leak and uh, craniovertebral junction instability. So I've seen this video and I think everyone should watch this video. This is actually a wonderful video by Professor Sufyanov. It's uh, uh, very good to learn also. So uh, there is uh, some few more articles. Uh, this is in Japanese article. Uh, the utility of uh, neurosurgical uh, procedures using 4K 3D exoscopes, clinical experience with the 4K 3D exoscope in the review of literature by the Japanese fellow in uh, 2022, they have published it. So they concluded that exoscopic surgeries maintain the same safety profile as those using operative microscope and have the potential to allow neurosurgeons to generalize neurosurgeons. Sorry, Professor Kumar Bansal, we can't hear you now. Some problem? Please try to check the Zoom again. Can you hear me, Professor Kumar Bansal? I think we can, we need to wait approximately one or three minutes, okay? Okay, can you hear me, Omar Bansal? Want to see your screens and hear your voice? I think we need to wait a little bit. Some problem maybe with your internet. Can you hear me? Please. Uh... Uh, now we wait the uh, our professor for uh, finishing the lectures, and after that we will have a coffee break. 
at 11 a.m., Professor Cherian will start his lectures. Uh, professor, we can see you now, but we don't hear you. Can you hear me, please? Say something. Kumar Pansal, can you hear me? Yes, so we can see your screens very well. We're clear. You don't hear me? Hello. Yes, we can hear you now, but we unfortunately don't see your screen. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, but uh, actually, my this uh, internet connection got lost suddenly. I don't know what happened, but uh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Can you see now? No, unfortunately, we don't see your screen. Maybe through. Can you see now? Sometime, no. Yes. Yes. We you see your okay. screen very oh. well. Yeah, thank you very much. No, so actually, I'm very, very sorry for that. Uh, this uh, My connection got lost suddenly. I don't know what happened. And it restored. <laughs> uh, internet got lost. So. So they have uh, the uh, two or three more slides are there only. So the, the Japanese has published this uh, article about the using uh, 4K 3D Exoscope. And uh, they came to the conclusion that uh, 
<coughs> the microscope and exoscope uh, maintain the same uh, safety profile as uh, uh, the uh, both have been compared. The the potential uh, to allow neurosurgeons to generalize neurosurgical procedures, which are considered difficult due to the neurosurgeon's awkward position during the use of microscope. So the study summarizes the utility of exoscope uh, uh, presents experience, which is uh, with its use in neurosurgical procedures, which is better than the microscope. So this is a uh, article. This is a video on YouTube. I saw that there is a comparison between the microscope and exoscope, which is very well described in, in all the way. It is just a five minute video. Uh, if you want, I can play it on or if we can see you can all watch on that. So uh, this is my last slide uh, that the conclusion is the multivariate Cox model showed that the use of microscope compared to the exoscope was associated with lower progression free survival in one of the article. So the exoscope has proven efficacy in terms of surgical resection, which was not different uh, than the microscope, but it's still better than that. So uh, this was my last slide. And uh, thank you very much for the uh, your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Christian Kumar Bansal, senior neurosurgeon. Uh, uh, is there any? Jaipur, India. Thank you very much for this beautiful lecture, for this great literature review about yeah, Thank you very much. Is there stuff? any? Maybe somebody have some questions kind for our true. speakers or somebody yes, uh, comments. Because there some problem here. Otherwise, I would have been. There yeah, is IP there or uh, so Albert is there? Hello, Banjal, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, Banjal, uh, it's a pity that you yeah, couldn't I'm make good it. Morning, good morning. Good morning, Banjal. It's a pity that you couldn't make it here, but uh, can you I thoroughly enjoyed your lecture. Thank you very much. I hope uh, uh, in October when we have the meeting that you could be here. Oh, yes, definitely. And in August, your planning uh, is the same time I will be planning. Uh, we will decide the dates later when you come back. Uh, I'm doing the NSI teaching course for uh, the students uh, during the August in Jaipur. Okay. Hello. Thank you very much, Professor, for this Hello. beautiful lecture. Maybe somebody have uh, some other questions? Okay. So now we are going to do a coffee break, okay? So uh, please enjoy all your time. We will start our uh, second lecture part at 11 a.m., okay? coffee break. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure.
हेलो
Ну, как бы это нормально. Yeah. <laughs> I prepare a little bit prepare. I will close this here. Just I have to start uh, this. Yeah. This is uh, this hours. Ah. This hours. Yeah. I have to start uh, Greenish Ancestors in, in India. I yeah. have to start it and then I uh, I will call you sometime. Of course. Of course, of course no problem. August 16, 17, 18, 19. Our institute August. is opening. Yeah. Oh. 200 beds. I think maybe, 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 maybe come. No, maybe. You Need. have to come. <laughs> no, you must. For sure. Must. <laughs> Albert and yeah. all of you who must come. Yeah. I think this is, is now is possible, possible, possible is for India. India. No, I, I get you. Maybe, maybe I, I can see you. Ah. Or, or like, no, no, know, everybody will. I make sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, we talk to the ambassador, and we make sure we get it. Yeah, but, but for for India, no problem with that. It ah. might be one two day day ah, okay. online. Okay. Oh, oh online. Okay. Okay. I, I I write um uh, sh short review. Yeah. Very quick, very quick, very quick. Okay, yeah. so yeah. what I do is um I'm going to send you the brochures and everything. Yeah. And uh yeah, so yeah. I have to call the organizing yes. guy. Yes. I call the organizing guy. And... This is organizing stories is they have uh, many questions, but it's possible possible. Uh, he's organizing, so mm -hmm. he's uh, hello, Ramdas. Hey, Ramdas, it's Professor Ramdas. So yeah, we will bring we will bring him here sometime. Hello, hello, Ramdas. Yeah. Is Yuri. Yeah. Yakimo is my very good friend yeah. from Tumen for maybe 10 years plus. Oh, здравствуйте, <laughs> здравствуйте. Very nice Russian language. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Bridge, too. We are calling him yeah. for August to the meeting. He does a lot of pediatric work, so cranial stenosis and all that. We will call him. I'm just going to do my talk right now, so I'll uh, call you after that. Yeah. Ah, okay, great. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay. 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 Yes. Okay. See you. Yes. See you. See you. See you again. See you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's good. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yes. Okay, we continue our lectures, and the next lecture will be from Ive Cherian, Director, Institute of Neurosciences, Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences, Karat, India. 
Counselor General Asian Congress of Neurological Surgeons. So uh, his lecture will be about the vascular anastomosis surgery with an exoscope. Uh, yeah, okay. I just need to. All right. That, thank you so much. First of all, I would like uh, to apologize to two people, not here. First is to my brother whose marriage is tomorrow, that I have missed this marriage to come here. So if he is around, I'm sorry, I, I would come see you. And second is to my daughter, whose birthday is on the 12th. And uh, it's probably the first time I am away from home during her birthday. So if she's hearing it, and my wife, if you're hearing it, I'm... Uh, Sorry that I'm not there at home. So I would go ahead and uh, we would look at a few things that, uh, you know, with exoscope and endoscope. We start off with uh, vascular. So we will, as we said, and before that, I wanted to show you the first exoscope that we made. This is something that you will enjoy. This is in 2016, two universal robots. And we attached an, uh, an endoscope and uh, a webcam to it. And you can see. We tried to make sure that it can scan and it can bring an area of interest to the center of the field. This is before any exoscopes came into the market. And you can see the mark now, and it is being brought to the center. It is scanning, and this is, uh, this is the machine itself doing. So, And you see the mark, the red mark, and it's going to the into the center now. And with head movements to control the scope. So we we basically we took it out of a metronic navigation and we we did this. You know, all these small labs, we can do much more work than actually what is being done with a lot of this European and FDA, uh, uh, I mean, the licenses by the time they get it, we can do much more. If you know how to game, this is exactly what you should do, okay? That's a universal robot arm, and it is, it is what is Esculap AO is based on. But today, the second generation, uh, Yoko, San, San Mayoko, is based on cobots. These are collaborating robots, and uh, they are much, much better arms. So I can, uh, uh, in fact, I am starting with a PhD in uh, AI, machine vision, machine learning, and deep learning. So... Uh, like neurosurgery, I have to learn a lot more about this and to communicate to people. So at, that is why at this phase, I realized that I have to do, uh, I have to understand their language and they have to understand my language. So we will start off with, let us say, a cavernous sinus meningioma. Now I will tell you how 
exoscope is different when we do cavernous sinus lesions. So generally, when you have a cavernous sinus lesion, I'm going to show you a cavernous sinus. You see this? It is T2 weighted hypo intense. It is a, which means it is a, it is a hard. It is not soft. It is reasonably hard, not very soft. Okay. And you can see the carotid inside. Can you see? The carotid is inside. So what would people do generally? They would go ahead, take a little bit of biopsy and send it to gamma knife. Okay. And anybody who goes and takes this tumor, they will say, oh no, you have third now, you have fourth now. So we are going to show you how high magnification surgery without, without really uh, bipolaring can uh, take care of this tumor. Okay. I'm going to show you only the most important. You can see the contrast enhancement. Okay. This came out as a meningioma. So it is a truly cavernous meningioma. Okay. So I am cutting the orbitomeningeal band. We described this for the first time. The, remove, the cutting of orbitomeningeal band to open the frontal and the orbital. You know, they open like that. So once we open, I can peel off the temporal lobe away from the cavernous sinus. This is what I'm going to do. And already I have the tumor. Can you see the tumor now? The tumor is already seen now. So the clinoid is seen and I'm already seeing the tumor. So first I'll remove the tumor outside the carotid, outside the cavernous sinus, okay? Between the temporal lobe and the cavernous sinus. And you can see... Here, the cavernous sinus is outlined. I have removed the temporal lobe. Is there anything to point? Uh, if you see that the temporal lobe is being taken off away from the cavernous sinus. And what I'm seeing is the cavernous sinus on that side. All the cranial nerves of the cavernous sinus are there. So, when I'm removing, can you see the cranial nerves? But they are at very high zoom. They are the fourth nerve, the V1 and the V2 is being seen. Generally, with the microscope, you never see at this magnification. You see, we are seeing at 60 to 70 magnification. We are not bipolaring. And now I'm going to take off the, the clinoid. So you can see the third nerve there. Can you see? This entire thing is the third nerve. Okay? I don't think... Very few places in the world, I mean, maybe nowhere in the world, you will see third nerve at that zoom. Okay? And what I'm doing is I'm using a 0.75 millimeter drill to drill the clinoid off without any heat and taking off the clinoid off so that from the optic nerve up to the third nerve, I am drilling everything away and freeing up you can see my, my suction right now is on the third nerve, okay? And I'm opening the third nerve space up. You know, with this exoscope, you can see the vasa nervorum. And if you preserve the vasa nervorum, if you bipolar the vasa nervorum, this nerve is gone. Even if you anatomically preserve it, it's gone. So what you need to do is, this vasa nervorum can be seen with this exoscope. And you have to preserve it. This is the only thing. And you can preserve these nerves. So anybody who tells you cavernous sinus is no-go zone, okay, just think about it. All right. Now, from the optic nerve, this is the optic nerve here. That's the third nerve there. This is the entire clinoid. So I am drilling very slowly the clinoid. You see, here you must understand the difference between you and a master drawing a face is attention to detail. So if you want to be a master, what do you do? You attention to detail, even very small sub-millimeter details. If you pay attention to, you can make a fantastic drawing. It's the same with surgery. You see, here you see, I have magnified it so much and I'm now going between the nerves. Can you see? That is a 4 and V1. That's the Parkinson's triangle. And I'll find the carotid there. I'll find the sixth nerve there. 
bit medial to V1, I'll find the 6 now. Okay? So, and I can take out the tumor from that region also. You remember? We had tumor in the medial region. So, that is the 6 now. Okay? And over the 6 now, the infralateral trunk of the carotid goes. And I'm taking out tumor now very slowly. No hurry. Okay? Keeping on, taking out, defining the carotid, keeping on, taking out till it's empty, till the tumor is empty. I use, see the magnification, that is the V1. The entire screen is the V1. Okay? So you can see the tumor is empty now. Okay? Third, third now here, fourth now, V1, V2. Okay? So... You can see the third now, fourth now. Within all windows, I have gone and taken out the tumor. All right. And now we will go to another. We will go to an ACOM. This is again. It is a complex ACOM because it is not very complex actually. It is just that there is a double A1. It's called a fenestrated A1. Okay? And the double A1 is important because if you put a control on the A1 and you think the A1 is controlled, if the aneurysm starts bleeding, then you are in trouble because there is another A1. Okay? So we have done a terional craniotomy and we are going for the, for the optic nerve now. Very high magnification opening the junction between the sylvian and the opticocarotid junction. I use a needle because it is, I don't, I used to have that. Can you see the vasa nervorum of the optic nerve? Can you see? Okay, so this is very important. The vasa nervorum has to be preserved. So when you bipolar in low zoom, this is what you destroy. Whether it is craniopharyngeoma, whether it is pituitary, whether it is aneurysm, you should not bipolar uh, the vasa nervorum. It's very important. If you have a bleed, please don't bipolar. I see that Sufiano was putting small pieces of gel foam. This is a very good technique. Okay? It's, it should not bipolar. So you see the carotid there? Can you see? Can you see the opticocarotid? Uh, uh, membrane and below that is membrane of Liliquest. So I'm now going ahead and defining the A1. Can you see the A1 now? That's a carotid and this is the A1. That's the A1. That's a carotid. Can you see? So now a little bit more of proximal sylvian dissection with a needle very close to the carotid. Because of the depth that I have, I can go very close. I can go extremely close and, you know, I can dissect. And you can already see that the A1, the double A1, you are starting to see. Can you see? That is the A1 fenestration there. That is the main A1. And the A1 fenestration, that's the fenestration. One A1 like that. Another A1 goes there and that's aneurysm. Okay? You see the zoom at which we are working. Okay? So, this is a ruptured aneurysm. And these instruments we have designed with the Indian company. Because at this zoom, the instruments are not good enough. Sometimes you need to design your own instruments. And you... I don't like taking this gyrus rectus. So, I, I dissect the interhemispheric fissure all the way. And because of the exoscope angles, I can beautifully position the scope. And now I can see the aneurysm neck. Can you see the aneurysm neck? That is the aneurysm neck. This is A2 going here. And that's the aneurysm neck. Okay? Have you ever seen surgery in this magnification? So with the exoscope, you can do this, okay? You have to be a little bit more careful, but you know, 
When I had a size 20 row in Nepal, I asked Zais to increase the magnification to 40. They said it's impossible. So I added a three-step magnification changer from an older microscope. And so Frank told me, you're crazy. And it completely screwed with my balance of the 3D camera. So they had to take it back and they had to... So when I had my Kinovo, they said, we are going to do the same modification. You don't touch it anymore. So we are going to do the same modification. They gave it to me. 40 magnification is what with the ProMag, IPs and three-step magnification change, I get 40 magnification with my size. Probably the only one machine in the world which can do that. I don't think anybody has it other than that. But we, with the exoscope, we get 70 to 80 with good stereoscopic zoom. Like uh, I know Albert made the helmet, probably the only machine. So these are things. So now with the we have gone ahead and clipped the... Uh, you can see the clipping. Yeah, so you can see the clipping there. And the A2 is beautifully spared. And you see the clip? <laughs> you see the size of this clip? Yeah. So this is not just microneurosurgery. It is, I call it ultra microneurosurgery. Okay? This is what you should come into. All right. Now we, I'll show you how we use an exoscope with a robotic endoscopic holder. So this is a callosal epidermoid, and this epidermoid is uh, engulfing all the A2 vessels. So no, sorry. I have to dissect out the A2s here, okay? So you can see this tumor is engulfing the whole A2s. So we went ahead, did a small craniotomy, started dissecting everything, but I want you to see only this part. This is with the exoscope. You can see it in 3D now. We're taking out all the tumor now, keeping on taking it out, keeping on taking it out. Now I'm putting in a 3D endoscope. This is called Einstein Vision from Esculap. I'm putting in a 3D endoscope. You can see the endoscope going in with the exoscope. Can you see? And with the endoscope, you can see the other side. Can you see? It's in 3D. This endoscope is 3D endoscope. It's 10 millimeter scope. It's cranial assist. And a robotic endoscopic holder that we designed is holding it. You will see the endoscopic holder also very soon. So you can see now with the exoscope and with the endoscope, I'm able to dis you know, I'm able to take it out from the, the vessel under complete control. Instead of just pushing, pulling it under blind or you know, earlier we used to do a mirror for this, but this is not good. Uh, a mirror is not good. You need direct, direct vision. And with this, you can take it out and you will see the A2s now. Once I take it out, you will see the A2s. Can you see the vessels? The vessels here. Look for the A2s. Can you see? And you are looking for any residues, nothing, no residues. Hemostasis is over. You can see the A2 is there on the corpus callosum. Can you see? So, and now you see what a small craniotomy. It's about five centimeter. Okay, five centimeter craniotomy. And you will see how in the OR is done. It is done now. See, that is my exoscope, the robotic exoscope. And on the right side is my endoscope. That is my endoscope holder. That's a Franca Emika robot. This is a Franca Emika robot. This is, I designed this with, with an Indian company. I designed, this is a Franca Emika. It's a back drivable robot system. I can place it anywhere I want. And then I can use the joystick to control it. Okay. And so exoscope 
endoscope surgery, endoscope held with a robot. Okay. And now we are getting the second generation endoscope uh, designed with an Indian company. I will show you this. Okay. Now let's go and see a petroclival cystic tumor. Now it was a cystic meningioma. The problem with cystic tumors are that it is fantastic to decompress, but it's very difficult to take it off from the structures. So we, we understood that the basilar, can you see the basilar here? Can you see? When we magnified, there was a vessel from the basilar which was very closely inside the vessel, inside the tumor and the capsule. So if we pull, if this vessel tears off from the basilar, then we had it. Maybe we'll get away with it, but we didn't want this trouble. So we decided to go from inside. This is called total intracapsular decompression and removal. So this is what we are going to do now. We're going to do a very limited kawase, very limited, between the fifth nerve and the seventh nerve. I'll show you the fifth nerve and seventh nerve. So we go for the kawase. This is as usual temporal lobe. After lumbar puncture, we, uh, the usual steps, we identify the kawase, quadrangle, and then we keep removing the bone with uh, between the fifth and the seventh. This is IAM. This is the arcuate eminence, so this is IAM. So arcuate eminence is behind the IAM. Always remember cochlea in front of IAM, arcuate eminence behind that. So I know exactly with my, I don't need navigation. I, I take the trigeminal eminence and I go up to the IAM and then I, I start cutting the, the superior petrosal sinus. This is superior petrosal sinus. I bipolar it, cut it, cut the tent, and then I am into the petroclival junction between the fifth and the seventh now. Okay? You will see the fourth now. Anybody who finds the fourth now, we say five star. Five star is a sweet. Uh, but anybody who finds the fourth, fourth now, right now, when I'm showing, I'm in the Meckel scale now, open, open anteriorly, I'm in the Meckel scale. The menjuma is there also. Now, this is the tent side. This is the tent side. That entire thing is the Meckel scape. So Meckel scape opened, tumor out. And now that's a tumor from there, the cystic region of the tumor. Being, being exposed. That is a Meckel scape dura. Can you see? That's the Meckel scape dura. And I'm opening the Meckel scape dura. The tumor is there. Now this is the cystic portion of the tumor. And I'm cutting the tent. You will find the fourth nerve there. If anybody found it, I give you the best suite in what you get in Russia. If not, you give it to me. Okay. Manuel is not allowed because he has already seen this video. So where is the fourth nerve? Where is the fourth nerve? Can you see? Tans is gone. So I show you again now. Now you guys give me the suite, okay? Now this is the edge of the tent. You should look, that's the fourth. Can you see? Can you see the fourth now? <laughs> that's the fourth now. Now this is the cyst and I'm going to open the cyst. Which is this now? I told you, which is the posterior now? Seven. Which is this now? Which is going into the Michael scale? Fifth. So this is the petroclavial, true petroclavial apex. Seventh nerve here, fifth nerve here. This is the Michael scale and the fifth nerve. This is the fifth nerve. This is the seventh nerve. My approach is, you know, is just like a rifle sniper. Okay? Just, just that much. So with so much magnification, you can see the fifth nerve here, seventh nerve here. No touching these both nerves. Okay. Small craniotomy. I remove. 
I remove the tumor, total capsular, total internal capsular decompression, keeping on taking the cystic part out, crushing the tumor out. Cannot use CUSA because everybody thinks CUSA doesn't hurt the vessel. It's not true. You put the CUSA on the vessel, you make a hole on the vessel. We have done that many times, okay? So I am taking the CUSA now, rest of the part. You see the basilar is here. I have to see the basilar. With the exoscope, I cannot see the basilar. So what should I do? What should I put in? I should put in the endoscope. So with the, with the holder, okay? So I will put in the endoscope. I am taking out all the tumor. Completely, completely I am taking out. But I have to see the basilar. Unless I see the basilar, the tumor is not taken out. So with the see the exos exoscope, how it changes the angle. And both my hands are inside. Now I put in the endoscope. Can you see the basilar in the end with the endoscope? Yes, can you see the basilar? That's the basilar there. There, there. With the exoscope, I'm not seeing, but the endoscope, I'm seeing the basilar. Can you see? Now, with the exoscope, can you see that vessel from the basilar? Can you see that vessel from the basilar? The perforator. So, we are taking that out without actually, that is the basilar, the huge basilar scene. So, all, everything is out. I have taken it out from uh, all the all the tumor without actually touching the perforator. Okay. Now, would you like a few more? <laughs> I'll show you a pica aneurysm. Now, this is a pica aneurysm, one of the most dangerous because I don't have proximal control here. Okay. Um, you should see, if you have an aneurysm here, that's brainstem, I, that's a vertebral artery. Okay, uh, let me just wait and show you where exactly is this aneurysm. This aneurysm is here. There's, I cannot, difficult to get proximal control here because there is a large bleb in this aneurysm, large bleb, and this bleb is preventing proximal control for me. So that's the side of the brain stem. This is done with the exoscope again. You can see the magnification. That is, what is this now going down? The only nerve which goes up to down. The other nerves are going laterally. What is that now going down on the vertebral artery? 11th. 11th now. Okay? Remember, is the 11th now. Okay? I am dissecting the accessory, gloso accessory glossopharyngeal triangle now. And you can see the vertebral and the brainstem there. Can you see? Can you see the tonsil? I mean, sorry. Can you see the tonsil of the cerebellum? And then I'm going to dissect now further. And when you dissect, you can see this bleb. Can you see the bleb? Now this bleb is very different color from the normal vessel. Can you see? And you cannot get control there because this is distal to the bleb. If you put your clip there, the bleeding is going to increase. Okay? So I have to dissect this cerebellum away from the bleb. Are you understanding me? So this is what I'll take time for. If you pull, the bleb will rupture. Then it's not good. Huh? It's okay. But um, obviously, you don't want things to be not under control. Now, you keep on dissecting, dissecting, dissecting. You see those white lines? Those are things that you have to dissect under high magnification. Can you see? This is highest magnification. Each of those white lines you have to take. Okay? And it may seem to you that there is no way you can dissect the cerebellum out from this, but you can. Always you can. Okay? Remember, 
there is a dissection plane in every pos every living thing every problem there is a solution it's a little difficult you see these white lines you see those white lines only see them don't see the aneurysm see only the white lines and start dissecting those white lines can you see that how the blub is coming into view more and more yes right I want to show you the importance of patience also. Exoscope is just not the important thing. You need to have surgical skill. You need to have patience. It's very important. Don't think about the next case that you are going to do. Okay? Your theater people, your fellows in the theater should fall asleep. That should be the way that you should do. That means they are quite safe. Who, With whom will you fall asleep in the car? Somebody whom you can trust, right? When my fellows fall asleep in theater, I know that, okay, these guys trust me. There is not much of excitement. Sometimes I have excitement in theater, but not all the time. Huh? So I, I, I sit down, dissect, look at it, okay? Just want you to understand how I'm going. It's a tough problem for me. It's not easy, this blab, okay? I am thinking how to, I'm thinking how to go about it. How to do this? You will find this in your theater. Suddenly, there is sometimes no easy solution. You have to sit down, take one fiber by one fiber, and then maybe take rest, and then maybe take another 10 fibers. Maybe count another 2,500 fibers. Okay? And this is how you do it. If you pull fast, you'll be like all the other surgeons. Of course, you can deal with it. But, see... I'm trying to find fibers more, more and more fibers. This is why I wanted to show you all this. If I edit it and just show you, okay, I did it, then there is no point. Okay. I want to show you. Can you see more fibers now? And see the bleb. Now, the bleb is here. That is the vessel coming, turning like that and going there. I dissected this entire bleb. And now I'm okay. I need to see this angle. I need to see that angle so that I can put the clip perfectly. All right? So I'm waiting. Again, I'm waiting. I've dissected out the entire bleb. The bleb is only one layer. It's not like an aneurysm. If you touch, it is easy to rupture it. Okay? So I'm, I'm trying... There are some vessels there. I'm trying to see if there are any fibers. You see my motion? Like sleep. Okay? I mean, I would want all of you to go to sleep in this one. Okay? It is, that is how. But believe me, my mind is raising. Because if I have rupture, it's ugly. You know, I can always uh, clip it or I can go to cardiac arrest and clip it. No problem. Sometimes if I have too much, I'm too much bored, I just rupture it and I, I clip it, okay? You will not believe it, but Manuel knows in, in my theater if I am, if there is a paraclinoid, big one, and I am finding it difficult to, then I, I, I just rupture it and easy for me to clip it after that. But you see now I'm trying to get that angle. Again, trying to take time. My residents will tell me, why can't you clip? I tell them, relax. There is a time. There's a time. I know many of you will feel, why can't you clip it? Now, there is a time. Okay? If I can clip it, it's my 15th year doing a vascular surgery. If, there is, if I can clip it, I don't, I don't like wasting time. Okay? I can clip it, I clip it. No doubt. I don't. I don't if you know me, they will understand I don't, I don't like wasting time. But... I'm looking for the right time. I'm looking at the bleb. How can it be compressible? Okay? I have to see this angle. This angle is very important because only with this angle I can clip correctly. Why am I showing you all this? You must understand. Aneurysm surgery, if you see an edited video, seven minutes and everything is fantastic and the guy find it out and clip it. No, it's not like this. Okay? Please understand. Spend time like this. Spend time like this. 
Even if you operate with your leg, you can do it. People say, oh, my hand is not okay for aneurysm surgery. I say, no, no, you can operate with your leg if you are slow like that. So I, I first put the clip, you see? And I see the angle, but there are fibers here. Can you see those fibers here? Yes? Those fibers are not good. Believe me, those fibers are not good. So I take it out. You may think I'm being too boring and too... No, it's not. Because you will understand now. Now you will... What I will do is... I want to take out... I'll take out those fibers. Okay? I take out those fibers and... I'm using a, a very precise bipolar. You see, it is coated on all sides by ceramic. And it will just, this is my aneurysm shrinking bipolar. So, I'm touching the bleb. This is for excitement because this bleb, when I'm touching this, all my residents wake up. Okay. You know, there's, I mean, generally, if I am touching the aneurysm, it's okay. But you see, I have literally burned that. And now all those fibers are tense. Can you see those tense fibers there? So, now I can cut it. And I can see that angle. Okay? So, I, I cut it. And I see that I go into high zoom. Reach there. Although it is written 7.91 zoom, it is five times more with the with the 4K because um, on the screen it's five times more. Okay, it's uh, 35 to 40 zoom. So now I've cut it. I'm happy and I'm seeing this angle. Can you see that angle? Now I know. When I put my clip, I know I'm completely safe. Now I'm going to reconstruct this. You will see how beautifully it will reconstruct. You may think that there is a dog ear here, but when I close the clip, you will see how the vessel is reconstructed. No hurry to close the clip. Just wait, wait, wait. Turn. Turn. See. Okay? It has to be... See, the vessel is beautifully reconstructed. Can you see? The entire turn of the pica, yes, no tension, no worries, no hurries, nothing, okay? Now, I'm going to show you just the opposite. Here, we had an MC aneurysm, and I told my consultant that there is atherosclerotic plaques, so you cannot put a temporary clip. You rupture because it is ruptured only two hours back. And when you take out the clot, if you take out the clot, you will have you will have a rupture. So you will have a rupture. Is okay, but no temporary clip. So they said no temporary clip. Yes, yeah, so now I'm this is ruptured just two hours back. So we are going under high zoom and doing assistant ostomy. So that the brain is lax. The brain was very tense. Lot of blood. Okay. So we go ahead and remove all this blood. Remove all this blood. And you see the carotid now. The carotid is stained with blood. Can you see the vasa vasorum of the carotid? It's at so much high zoom. And I'm going very close to the carotid, just close to the carotid, and doing the cutting. So now we dissect the entire sylvian. My consultant is doing it. You can see the aneurysm. Aneurysm is here. Okay? That is the MCA major vessel. This is one branch. This is another branch going there. So this MCA is I think you were there for one of my ruptures, right? Did I put a temporary clip that day? Okay, here, no temporary clip. <laughs> we have a lot of ruptures, okay? 
I don't mind ruptures because I think in 2007, 2008, when I started doing learning my aneurysms, I ruptured all my aneurysms. Okay, I learned by rupture. So rupture is a normal thing for me. So it is an aneurysm. It's, we say it's dharma is to rupture. Okay. So we do not see that's aneurysm now. Can you see? It's already leaking. Can you see? When it started leaking, my consultant said, okay, fine. Now you have to come. So I go in. And instead of trying to avoid the rupture, I go to the point of the rupture. No temporary clipping. Okay? No temporary clipping. It's very simple if you put a temporary clip. Then I, there is no point in showing you. So I go into the rupture site now. Now you will see how it is when like MC aneurysm ruptures. We had ICA ruptures. We have basilar ruptures. And see, the rupture is starting. But there is atherosclerotis plaque. Can you see? All over. And if I put these temporary clips, next day patient will have a stroke and they will say, oh, now spasm. It's not spasm. It's because you put a clip. And now all hell is ready to break loose. My consultant puts a, a suction there. And you can see this is starting to rupture now. So no hurry, nothing. I mean, we are not bothered. We're just getting some space. <laughs> you know, you must be, they say, you know, you must be like psychopaths. When this kind of things happen, your, your heart rate, instead of going up, it should go down. You should be in your zone. You must say that, the whole purpose of being in neurosurgery is this. Now you see, only black. Okay? It's, huh? So I have to bring down my zoom a little bit. And I am no temporary clip. Okay? Just going to find out where is the site of rupture. With two suctions. With two suctions, you can always find out the site of rupture. Okay? You rotate the two suctions around the aneurysm. And you, now you found the site of rupture. You see? Bleeding stopped. All the blood is going into the suction. Can you see the aneurysm in the suction now? It is going into the suction. Okay? That is all. Any aneurysm is like this. Okay? You keep it there and uh, you don't... And then you take out that patty. You can see the other vessel. Can you see? And then you say, naughty aneurysm. Okay? Don't do this to me. Okay? Just give him one slap there. And put the clip. You see the atherosclerotic plaque on the distal vessel also? And then after you say naughty aneurysm, you put the clip. And then you will see the rupture site also. Now after I put the clip, you will see the rupture site. Again, no hurry. No hurry. Very gentle. Can you see the rupture? That is all. Okay? This patient walked home. All right. So, no hurry, no worries. Huh? I think that's enough. Huh? <laughs> uh, I will, oh, anastomosis is something that I did not show you. Um, this is a giant cavernous aneurysm. I love cavernous aneurysms. I, I love opening them, opening the cavernous sinus, but not in this case, stupidity to open, okay? Here, we saw that we did a we did a uh, a carotid block balloon balloon occlusion test, and she passed it. So we could have just you have my friend would have said just close it off. But the problem is I had some some bad experiences in very few patients when I closed it off. So in these cases, I do a low flow bypass. Can you see the ST? Can you see the superior temporal artery? And you will see the vasa vasorum of the superior temporal artery very soon. I will just dissect it. And you know, my wife helps me to do it. She's got probably a better hand that I have. So, so, um, can you see the vasa vasorum? Have you ever seen it before in an ST? Uh, so we are opening that and always we anastomose to M4, not to M3. We anastomose to M4. M4 is very small branch. 
And the good thing is occlusion time is very high. I can wait for one hour, two hour, three hour, no problem. Okay? Because M4 is highly interconnected. M4 is highly interconnected. Like Unlike M3, M4 is very highly interconnected. So you see, I'm dissecting M4 under very high zoom. Okay? Under extremely high zoom. And so we do this for a lot of adult moya moya, repeated strokes, which is not getting better with aspirin. So we keep doing it. Okay? It's, you should try it. Now the whole world is changing. The physicians are sitting with just aspirin. It's not good, okay? You should say to the, your physician, sorry, aspirin is not working. Patient is going down. So you can see that is, so I always put something like that. Not for color recognition or something. The patty, the patty fibers irritate me, you know. I don't like irritation in the surgery. They come into the into the suture and they irritate. So I just to keep that away, I put a small glove piece there. And you can see, you can see how the ST is prepared. Very, very all the adventitia in that part is taken off. And then you apply the dye. Can you see the magnification? You able to appreciate the magnification? Is just so that is the ST, and this is the recept, rece receiving vessel. So you put the dye there, just so that you can see whether there is any dissection. If there is a dissection, the endoth endothelium comes off, then it is not a good anastomosis. So you are the, the, no, these uh, instruments are also designed by us, Indian company. Okay, because we could not find Esculap instruments as good as for this kind of high magnification surgery. So. Now we go there, we find out that there is no dissection and we take out the flap. If there is a dissection, you can always fix the dissection by fixing the endothelium to the adventitia with the suture. Okay, you can do that also. So now you're going ahead and you are putting the suture there. And well, so you take about 10 sutures, okay? Ten sutures and then you complete your anastomosis. So can you see? Uh, four, four on each side, maybe five, five on each side and one, one. Twelve or ten sutures, depending. I don't want a leak after that. Many people say it's okay to have a leak. It's not okay to have a leak, okay? Don't have a leak. If you have a leak, that means it is suboptimal. Okay. So, and under uh, high magnification, you look at it and you close off the carotid, you can see it filling. Can you see the filling? That's anastomosis site. It is filling from the ST. Beautifully filling from the ST. The carotid is also filling, but it is filling from the ST beautifully. And we closed off the carotid. Okay. Closed off the carotid, you can see the closed off the carotid, close closure there with this with this clip, and well with permissions. Uh, this is how the patient was. Uh, so thank you very much. Okay, you have seen some of the exoscope surgeries. Any questions? Any questions? Any suggestions? Any questions? Huh? I have one question. Ah. Yeah. 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 Yes. Bleeding. Yeah. So this is something that I did not, yeah, we have a technique. What we do is we take gel foam, you know, gel foam, and we we uh, use a saw, I mean, use a, like a saw, we, we powder gel foam. We fill it into a 50 cc syringe, and we connect it with a three-way uh, connector. We connect two 50 cc syringes. 
and then we add water and 5 ml of the patient's serum. Uh, so you take, you send this uh, blood, about 10 ml or 20 ml of blood to the laboratory. They, what do you call this? Centrifuge. They centrifuge it and they give the serum to us. You add the serum and you add normal saline and then you take it with 50 cc syringe, both sides like this, make it like paste. And this paste, we take it on a syringe with blunt needle and we inject this. It's better than fibrin glue. So you inject and then you put patty, it stops. Uh, I will show you uh, real, you know, we open sometime Gulfar segment. Gulfar segment is the segment of the uh, of the cavernous sinus, which is posterior cavernous sinus, with junction to uh, superior pitocel sinus, inferior pitocel sinus. It's the most vascular part of the cavernous sinus. Sometime in endoscopic surgery uh, for uh, some brain, some glioma or something, I mean, can I just show you one more video? It'll be interesting, I can promise you. So since he asked the question, I will show you that I opened the Gulfar segment, okay? I connected it. Oh, okay. Can you see this lesion? This lesion is we we could not do this lesion with anything but just an end, transnasal endoscopy approach. Okay? It's crazy. It's a brainstem glioma, plus pilocytic brainstem glioma. You see? It's really crazy. The clivus is okay. The basilar is in front. This is the problem. It's not like the clival codoma. The basilar is here. Completely displaced to one side. Okay? In the front. When I open the dura, in the transnasal approach, right next to me is the basilar. Okay? Why do we become neurosurgeons if we don't have these crazy cases, you see? You see this basilar? See this basilar? It is just in front. When I open, it's just in front. And not only the basilar. The basilar is like, in. I am the tumor. Let us say, I am the tumor here. Basilar is in front. All the perforators from the basilar are also in the front. Six nerve is in the front. So I have to go through segments between this segment, this perforator, this perforator, basilar, and six nerve. This is what you're going to see. And at 13 centimeter length, because the brainstem, if you see, is just very far away. It's not like basilar clipping. So I use the endoscopic holder, the robotic endoscopic holder. This is the only reason why I can do these surgeries because uh, nowhere in the world you will find that these brainstem tumors are done by endoscopy. Okay, it's completely crazy to do this. So you can see the tractography. You cannot approach from anywhere. This patient, she was preserved and I had to keep her preserved. Okay? So, we measured the length. is 13.5 centimeter. So, we, we understood that the only way. So, we are going to do the... My ENT colleague is uh, doing the drilling and approach for me. You can see the LOCRS uh, uh, today. Uh, my good friend Albert showed you the LOCRs, the cellar flow. That's a clivus now. You can see the cellar. This is the paraclival carotid and the cellar dura open. And behind the cellar dura, this side is the gulfar segment. I have to open the gulfar segment. I have to release the six snow on that side. To release the six snow on that side, I have to open the Gulfar segment. It's terrible bleeding. It's not stop. It's like basilar rupture. Terrible bleeding. So you have to put this glue, what I prepare, 
and just wait. Okay. And this is PCP. First recliner process comes here. Other PCP. This is clivus. Okay. If you understand anatomy, then now I'm going to open. I will show you when I'm going to open. I use curved bipolar. You know why? Curved bipolar? When I pull up under very high magnification, because when I pull up, two vertebral artery, can you see? Like this, two vertebral artery and basilar, just like this. You will see now, okay? And the sixth now. So exactly like that. Two vertebral artery. Can you see? That's the vertebral artery. That's the other vertebral artery. Basilar is here. And pulling out the dura, pulling up the dura and bipolaric because the dura is very vascular. That is a six nerve. Six nerve. Can you see? And that's the Gulf Art segment where I have opened the cavernous sinus and mobilized the six nerve that side. I have mobilized the six now. That's a basilar perforator. Can you see? That's a perforator. That's a basilar. And I'm taking out tumor now. In this window. See, that's a perforator, basilar perforator. This is the basilar. So you can see the vertebral, basilar, basilar perforator. Tumor taken out from that, that window, tumor taking, we are taking a tumor out from this window, okay? You can see, no hemostasis possible because uh, you have just have to allow. If there is a spurter, you have to stop, but otherwise, you see, now, you see this, this is just a hematoma. And that is fact. This, this is all hematoma, okay? This is all hematoma. Okay? She is now Two, two years post-surgery, coming with her child, walking, okay? You will see her. Yeah, oh, okay, all right. I... You will see her post-op. You will see the pre-op and the post-op pictures now. And you compare and you see that the entire tumor is out. Gross total resection, and this is her. Okay. Right. So that answers your question. This this glue is fantastic. So you should try it. Fibrin glue is too costly. One first of all, and always worried about cost. And uh, this is much better. This is much better, easy, and much better. Uh, and one more thing, I want to show you. The first generation, Sanma Yoko. Yoko is my my daughter whose birthday is uh, uh, on 12th. I'll miss it. This is the Sanma Yoko. First generation. We made it like a microscope, but it can get it can be controlled in every way. And it is uh, 3D 4K. And this is the and this is the Sanma Santuna, my younger daughter. So. We made it like the NC2 controls. We like NC2. So this is the endoscopic holder. And it can uh, go in any direction. You can keep it in any direction. You can, it can go up and down or move like this. Seven degrees of freedom. So you can use it for transnasal, transventricular, spine. And swivel. All the crazy angles you can have. And it can stand on any side. Away from your operating field. And it can go up and down also. Thank you very much. Any more questions or anything else? Any comments, questions? Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Anything else from the younger guys? You can ask, don't worry. Eh? First thing, let go of your fear. Ask. Okay. Anybody? Manuel? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. That was fantastic. So thank you very much, Professor Ibe Cherian. The next speaker will be Hikimu Fyodorovich, PhD neurosurgeon, have, head of the Pediatric Neurosurgical Department, Federal Center of Neurosurgery, Tumen. He will talk us about the um, use of exoscopic treatment of craniosynostosis. Please. Uh, thank you, Professor. I'm sharing a very fantastic, fantastic uh, 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 experience. This is this is, uh, is this uh, leader from from uh, high tech technology in your surgery. It's really, it's really. <clears throat> uh, uh, Professor, I'm sharing say about the exoscopic treatment. Uh, uh, with high mag high mag magnification, very with the exoscope is very high mag magnification. But uh, my <clears throat> my presentation about the craniosynostosis surgery is uh, is a little bit different. Different use for uh, different use for for craniosynostosis. This is is a little bit different. Uh, different position about the exoscope. <clears throat> this is information about our center. You see, we have a lot of operation room, it's a lot of uh, surgery. Uh, we have a exoscope with different different uh, uh, <clears throat> different generation. And now we use this uh, exoscope is from Esculab. Uh, but it is possible uh, possible uh, use uh, uh, operation with hybrid operation room with, with uh, CT scan control. For example, this is 3D exoscope is has up is used for current sensor surgery. <clears throat> but uh, I think this is possible possible use from from skin to skin uh, as, as, as uh, operation this is for possible possible control control for kind sensors is very important is uh, bloodless is <clears throat> for um, for improve the kind sensors so surgery need control of blood from skin to skin uh, and, and need high modification and uh, is possible control or all step about craniosynostosis, this is uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, uh, defined as primitive fusion on one or more cranial suture, uh, leading to secondary distortion of skull shape, resulting in skull deformity. <clears throat> uh, prevalence of craniosynostosis about two point one to five point six per ten thousand births. About the type craniosynostosis, it's different. It's metopic craniosynostosis, metopic trigonocephaly. Um, we have experience on uh, about one uh, 189 cases. Sagittal uh, craniosynostosis, for example, scaphocephaly, is about uh, 376 uh, 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 number of the surgery. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, hemicoronal coronal bi bicoronal bi lambdoid coronal hemi lambdoid coronal coronal is a little bit less. <clears throat> Very important pre-surgical diagnostic coronal coronal for example, this ultrasound coronal coronal we have a new classification of investigation of the coronal coronal surgery. Um, <clears throat> And ultrasound characteristic different uh, about the uh, about the kernel uh, um, uh, suture, um, bone rolls, bone range, and absence uh, of the bone diastasis. 
and currency and storage is uh, about ultrasound, it's possible for view, uh, this is uh, suture, this is no suture. Uh, for example, this sagittal currency and storage. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and characteristic ultrasound, this is uh, uh, with, um, we write this article, and article is all poss possible, all uh, view. Uh, evaluation of surgery conscientiousness is step by step. This open surgery is uh, early 20th, 20th century. After open surgery with resorbable plates, distraction system. Uh, after uh, in conscientiousness surgery, endoscopic surgery, uh, helmet therapy. In and in future, I think with uh, is exo endoscopic surgery, uh, for example, with ICT. Uh, this is, uh, I think, this this may be in future more and more. Uh, our experience uh, about six hundred patient uh, from twelfth year, and for example, for craniosagittal craniosynostosis, uh, we have endoscopic craniopathic about uh, one two hundred ten cases, exa endoscopic three D mini craniopathic about uh, 24 cases uh, and open surgery is big uh, experience too. Uh, <clears throat> why we divide this uh, group? Uh, for example, for small uh, small baby, about uh, four months is more better and, and endoscopic kind of plastic. Uh, for open for one, for after one year, but between two four months and two years, we, not, we don't know what, what, what uh, the, what the, uh, successful use for high, what is technology and exoscopic and the exoscopic 3D mini plastic is possible possible use is this group is from four months to one year of course it's good uh, pre-surgical planning this is uh, it's very important this is, for example with, with 3D steroid pro is from special program for visualization 3D uh, before surgery and what do we is uh, is before and is after is during surgery, for example, is uh, <clears throat> preoperative virtual planning. This is possible. Uh, we use after desk mesh mixer, a special uh, special design. This most possible. Uh, what you like, what you like the dif uh, different um, uh, technique used for. Uh, for repair uh, deformation of the skull. Uh, <clears throat> also, it's possible possible uh, high uh, high speed drill model, especially before surgery too, uh, in the laboratory. Three uh, D laboratory is possible possible uh, uh, modeling for for craniosynostosis to this before surgery. This is surgical equipment, for example, special rongers, special cutting, and uh, we create new uh, new surgical instrument. This is a special uh, endoscopic craniotom. Uh, this is a special special shield for craniot uh, for uh, standard standard drill, and uh, it's possible craniotomy not vert not horizontal uh, vertical but horizontal. For endoscopic surgery, for example, this this design uh, of the endoscope is possible cut the bone from uh, uh, to parallel to endoscope. This is standard surgical operation room. Uh, this is uh, ultrasound scanner, three uh, D monitor, three uh, D endoscope, three D exo for for four K exoscope. Ultrasound bone scalpel, mm, etc. Also, it's possible possible use a three D endoscope too during surgery in CTU. What? Uh, why exoscope? Exoscope is possible possible use a different angle. It's very uh, as the angle view is uh, angle view from certain degrees to fifty degrees. Uh, this is small incision, uh, uh, small incision skin, uh, and after possible change the view. Uh, this is uh, position of patient, for example, spine position, prone position, 
по name the Sphinx uh, for patient. Um, this is the endoscopic surgery with five months old, five months is old, with male with sagittal crane synastosis. And uh, uh, the preoperative planning is skin incision here and uh, cut the uh, the suture, you know, line, line, suture, cut line. This is uh, skin incision, good controlling, control of the bleeding. Is uh, is a micro as micro microsurgical dissection and change view, uh, change view the endoscope, impossible, impossible uh, walking in dissection after dissection uh, sub aponeurotic and cut the bone, control the old step, old step by step, all control uh, the bleed. Yeah. It's possible, possible rongers, possible use the drill, possible this, uh, all, everything, every, everything bipolar, everything instrument. In this section, this section of this skull, this section of this bore, control the bleeding, these special respirators, rongers, and step by step is this one. This is endoscopic retractor, the special. Yeah. And possible possible use also endoscope. Endoscope is possible view is uh, for chemo studies for good view visualization of the of the cutting is is need for if you need if possible stop it bleeding bipolar coagulation. This will stop. It's after surgery, uh, uh, post-operative, after after only line on the line incision, it's possible possible change the deformity of the after. This is, uh, for example, the ex ex endoscopic cranial plastic. This is more older, uh, for 10, 10 months old male. It's preoperative planning. This is uh, this is line incision, uh, uh, different line incision. This is uh, for reconstructive of the skull after surgery with uh, uh, same technique. It's free line incision. It's more the coagulation. It's more, more stopped the bleeding. Bloodless is very important. All step by step. It's possible. It's possible use a special respirator. And all step we need need control bleeding. This is good visualization of this skull. After this is used, uh, this burk hole, a small match head, special. This is used, the craniotom, is standard craniotom. Standard craniotom is view this special design, this preoperative planning, before preoperative planning, cutting. And after we use the uh, uh, cut, this special uh, special uh, craniotum different type in protect the dura protect the aponeurosis a special special design for this is exact is post operative CT scan 
In conclusion, in, in our study, you have to demonstrate the endoscopic endoscopic minimal invasive craniopathic as effective method of craniopathic children. And of course, it's, uh, it needs surgeon learning curve for its exoscope. It needs a microsurgical laboratory. It's, it's possible use for is a special special hands-on course for for example the this year we planned several courses this is first course for exoscope i think it's in future i think we more and more use the exoscope in our practice not only microsurgical uh, microsurgical but uh, for open surgery for for example for uh, for approach for, for for skin from skin for skin to skin and for bloodless and view good visualization. Thank you. Yes, maybe, maybe, maybe if, if possible questions. Maybe questions. Thank you. Thank you. Ну, в процессе можно тоже есть какие-то вопросы возникают. Сейчас еще будем, мы же еще два дня здесь будем, поэтому здесь, в принципе, есть какие-то вопросы возникают, можно обсудить. обсудить. Спасибо. Thank you very much, Yuri Alexeyevich. Uh, okay, so the next speaker will be a PhD candidate, neurosurgeon of the Federal Center of Neurosurgery, Nargiza Grifulina. It's um, so. Uh, my lecture will be about the exa endoscopic treatment of the trigeminal neuralgia. So today, the gold standard of the treatment of trigeminal neuralgia associated with a neurovascular conflict is a, a neurovascular decompression, which we do usually with a microscope. An operative mask microscope has been considered as a mainstay in modern neurosurgery, and it's provide a magnified images on the retina. Alexander, can you... Mm -hmm. An operating microscope has been considered as a mainstay in modern neurosurgery. It's provided magnified images on retina stereoscopically while providing detailed view of surgical anatomy. During the last two decades, neuroendoscopes are increasingly used in neurosurgery, like endo-exoscopic or endo-microsurgical and, um, uh, surgery. In 2008, an exoscope system has been introduced as an alternative of microscopes and endoscopes. The exoscope serves for observing and illuminating an object filled on a patient from a position set apart from the patient's body. One of the strong points of exoscope was described by the Kiniki Nikiyama. So he... Um, he talked about the advantages of the of the exoscope, and there is uh, three advantages, like a uh, working distance, as uh, Professor uh, Ibcherian said, uh, working distance, field of view, and depth of field. It's very important. So the emphasizing advantages of the exo exoscope were regarded as a wide field of view and deep focus. The exoscope provides an ability to maintain 35 mm dip on field under the 50 mm of field of view. It minimizes the need of repositioning and refocusing during the procedure. It's incredibly important, as you, think, as you understand. Uh, 
So the effectiveness of microvascular decompression is widespread in world literature. You see in some kind of articles. For example, a recent meta-analysis demonstrates an analgetic result from the surgical treatment in 76% of cases. It goes without saying that the main predictor of pain reduction in post-operative period is an intraoperative uh, visualization of compressing vessels, their safe dissection and repositioning. On the screen, you can see our uh, pre-operative planning. Usually we use the innovative program, for example, I don't know, I'm sure professor, can you use some kind of 3D programs before the modeling of uh, the surgery? Yeah, okay. So oh, in this case, we usually use uh, Innovitech program or some time mesh mixer program, also kind, another kind of 3D slicing program, because it's incredibly important to, to visualize the complex um, neurovascular conflict. For example, in this case, we have a neurovascular conflict with a but um, petrosal vein, uh, this is a trigeminal nerve, and this is a superior cerebellar artery, uh, the branches of the superior cerebellar artery. So here you can see the neurovascular conflict. Okay, it was a really interesting case. Okay, it's incredibly important to know the distribution of the blood vessels topographically related to the trigeminal neuralgia in the cerebellar pointing angle. As you know, the uh, neurovascular conflict may be with the superior cerebellar artery with its strong lateral or medial branches or anterior inferior cerebral artery, like a rostral branch and another kind of branch. It's go without saying that the neurovascular conflict can be with the uh, petrosal vein too. Uh, this is a very interesting and very, uh, I think, useful uh, article uh, wrote by Russo. It's a typical and atypical neurovascular relationship of trigeminal nerve in the cerebellar pointing angle, an anatomical study. It's a really great study. Look at this beautiful cadaveric photo. So can, you can see here the uh, superior cerebral artery. See here, you can see the uh, trigeminal root and Meckel's cave, the uh, third... Uh, the third nerve. Um, uh, then uh, you can see here the ascending branch of the anterior inferior cerebral artery. Uh, it's a fourth nerve. Uh, it is a fourth nerve and the medial and lateral branches of the superior cerebral artery. On these screens, you can see the anterior inferior cerebral artery, that, like uh, the rostral branch, the fourth nerve, fourth nerve. Here you can see the very beautiful view of the fourth nerve, um, uh, some pontin veins, and uh, like here you can see the pontin veins. And here you can see the, um, the petrosal vein, which draining to the superior petrosal sinus. It's a, a very beautiful photo as I, see, as, as I think. And this is a branches of the posterior cerebral artery and the uh, superior cerebral artery. On this uh, picture, you can see a very important structure for uh, post-operative hearing loss. As you know, the, uh, during this surgery, sometimes we have some complications like, for example, hearing loss, like a fascial nerve palsy or some hearing loss. So here you can see the um, labyrinth artery here labyrinth artery. And sometimes when we uh, damage this artery, we uh, have a post-operative complication like a, a hearing loss. So another kind of pictures here, you can see the radicular uh, uh, trigeminal artery. So I think it's very clear and good anatomy. I really recommend you to read this article. And here, like a schematic view, it's like a diagram describing the main vascular relationship of the trigeminal nerve roots, uh, like a sensory and so on. So I really recommend to read this article. And this is a fresh cadaver here. Uh, so over the uh, long period of time, this surgical treatment was performed using a microscope and demonstrated a good effect. However, due to the defect of tubular vision field and anatomical relationship between some responsible vessels and uh, nerves cannot be fully exposed. So in recent years, with a wide complication of endoscopy, 
of neuroendoscopy, sorry for that, uh, of neuroendoscopy, its advantages such as a multi-angle flexible observation and illumination bring a different experience of sur to surgeon. In contrast to the linear illumination of the microscope, the panoramic and view of endoscope allow a surgeon to see more surrounding anatomy. For example, this case was done approximately two or three months ago. It's a, a vertebral basilar dolichectasis. Here you can see the 3D program uh, with a 3D model with which was done by Inhibitec program. And uh, this operation we uh, done with the Professor Sufianov and Professor Don Van He. Um, it was a really great cases, great, really great case. So, uh, according to the literature, the post-operative result of we, um, when we сравнить, uh, как uh, uh, when we uh, Comparise. When we comparise the the endoscopic result and and microscopic result, there is no a lot uh, a huge difference. But uh, endoscopic is more safe because of uh, a panoramic view. So there is a lot of difference. Uh, there is a, there, there is a lot of advantages of the endoscopic um, endoscopic. Um, surgical treatment of trigeminal neuralgia because of different angles of endoscope lens provide a panoramic view of the cerebral pontian angle with a 360 degree assessment, assessment of the neurovascular conflict and avoid the blind spot of the tra traditional microscopy because heating uh, microvascular conflict is very common in usual neurosurgery. Uh, moreover, the endoscopic visualization allow protect the installation under the direct visual control with the circumferential positioning verification. Uh, uh, the next advantage is that the endoscopic decompression is uh, possibly without drilling away the petrosal tubercle. It's uh, very important because uh, because of the uh, because of the linear vision uh, by the micro tubal tubular vision field by a microscope, we can't uh, see uh, the neurovascular conflict because of uh, uh, because of petrosal tubercle. But when we use the endoscope, we can see it very clear. And the next advantages of the uh, endoscopic assistant or a full endoscopic surgery, it is a diving technique because after surgery, we put the Teflon pad uh, between the nerve and vessels and we can uh, we can check, check is it uh, complete uh, or not complete? It is uh, enough for, uh, for decompression or not. Moreover, when we put in the cerebral pontian angle water, like a uh, water, we check it is... Uh, Mm. Uh, yes. mm, it, it stay good or not. So here you can see the very thin trigeminal nerve. You can see the dolichectasy of the basilar artery. And uh, you can see the result. It's a 3D model after the surgery. It's a 3D model. And you can see the pad. So here you can see the advantages of the endoscopic treatment of the trigeminal neuralgia. It's uh, angles, depth and angle of lens. It is a um, very panoramic vision and uh, um, it's not, not necessary to drill the petrodal tubercle. So it's uh, very good. But despite the advantages of the endoscopy, a number of authors describe a clinical cases of complication of these uh, treatment methods. For example, um, uh, in some articles we can see after this endoscopic endoscopic treatment, full endoscopic treatment, the supratentorial uh, gematoma or vestibular nerve damage or some fascial nerve damage. The whole range of complication is associated with the presence of blind spots of the endoscopic lens. The movement of instruments around the tip of the endoscope, as well as the introduction of instruments into the area visualized by the endoscope, is not visualized. 
which leads to potential risk of developing damage to uh, adjacent neurovascular structure. Clinical confirmation of need for 360 uh, uh, degree assessment of the neurovascular conflict described in the literature. So, for example, some kind of after authors uh, find the heating, a heating um, neurovascular conflict by the endoscopic assistants. A lot of articles write, a lot of uh, authors write about these articles. So here you can see the Don Van Hare, and he described um, a very, uh, he wrote a very beautiful article, endoscopic assistant macrovascular decompression for terminal neurology secondary to the vertebral basal dull hectasy. Uh, he used an uh, endoscope and microscope. He combined an, an, a microscopic um, treatment. However, in our opinion, the method of joint use, uh, use of just a microscope and endoscope is not safe and ergonomic enough. During the immersion of endoscope, external visual control is not necessary in order to level out blind spots outside the endoscopic shell, uh, which we do fall into the field of view and um, of the optic due to the uh, undirectional viewing angle. To visualize the advan advancement, the endoscope synchronous control to the microscope and endoscopic images is necessary, which is not ergonomic when using the microscope and the endoscope. As far as the control of immersion of the endoscope, it is necessary to defocus uh, the vision on micro and endoscopic vision. So the absence of free visual access due to the bulky microscope causes the need to switch vision and disable to positioning the surgeon's hands, which, uh, when working in narrow anatomical corridor, can lead to the fatal complications. Uh, all these complications we can uh, uh, eliminate by using the ex ex and exoscope. Here you can see our operation room. It's a seven operation room. You can see the exoscope and uh, uh, our equipment, a, a surg surgical equipment. Uh, here you can see the case of trigeminal neuralgia, which was done by the, our professor, Professor Sufyanov. You can see the endoscopic uh, endoscope and exoscope, esculap here. Here you can see esculap, and here you can see very clear the endoscopic view and the exoscopic view. You can, you can see by exoscope, you can see on one screen the movement of uh, the instruments inside the uh, surreal pointing angle. So since the free visual access in front of the monitors ensures simul um, simultaneous visual visualization of the exoscoping and endoscopic part of the surgical field, as a facility says immersion of the endoscopic without additional movement as a visual stain. Uh, so you can stay, you can see on, on just one screen and you can control everything. You can control the movement of the instrument and you can control the uh, situation inside the cerebral pointing angle by the endoscope. It's uh, very important. The use of monitor allows the surgeon to as and as their assistants better integrate the workflow, freely maneuvering in area of interest. The assistants can move an, an endoscope, adjust the focus of zoom, so that the surgeon can continue the operation from the most appropriate angle without interrupting his bimanual technique. So by this technique, the surgeon can work bimanually. It's incredibly important. Also, while using an endoscopic assistant, the main surgeon remains in the same position, which ensures high ergonomic to work um, without our standing the muscle and surgical spine. In addition, and to ensure the optimal ergonomics of work environment, the combined use of exoscope and endoscope, which uh, broadcast of two monitors, allows to allow the entire operation team and residents to obtain high quality image of the uh, for education. So all residents can see the screens or in operation room. So here you can see the case of the uh, trigeminal of the complex uh, neurovascular conflict with the veins and arteries, and uh, we additionally we use the ICG control uh, in this case. So I hope soon this article will be published. So here you can see the another articles which was written by Angela. Angela 
and uh, she write in, or he or, uh, the author write about the advantages of exoendoscopic treatment. Here you can see the loss of my screen. It's uh, exoendoscopic um, treatment, not trigeminal neuralgia, but gamifacial spasm. I think that uh, exoendoscopic treatment can uh, can be used in all cases in cerebellar not not only cerebellar pontine go go those things, but uh, it's uh, can use and uh, it uh, can. Uh, be more effectiveness and more safe technique. So here you can see the cerebellar pointing angle, trosal tubercle, dissecting very precise. Um, Professor Ike Sherian show us the vasovasorum of the nerve, and here you can see it too. Very precise, very. Wait, sorry. Here you can see the combined approach to the cerebellar pointing angle, the endoscopic view and exoscopic view. By exoscopic view, we can control the movement of our instrument for protecting the neurovascular structures. Okay, thank you very much for the attention. I hope you enjoy this lecture. Maybe somebody has some questions or some comments. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the next speaker will be Ilshad Gaisin, uh, Ilshad Albertovich Gaisin, PhD candidate, neurosurgeon of the Federal Center of Neurosurgery, Oncology Department, Tumen, Russia. Okay, I start. Uh, good day to everyone. I want to present my uh, presentation of the uh, title, the title, Exoscopic Surgery of Intraventricular Tumors. Uh, I am Gaisin Enshat, first year graduate student, neurosurgeon of the Neurology Department. Uh, and I want to start to say that our all surgery associated with uh, intraventricular tumors, we perform with a uh, mini inv invasible mean. Uh, and all of our uh, conference, we say about the advantages, disadvantages uh, of the exoscope and is uh, full full list published with Fanny in, in 2021 uh, of the advantages uh, and disadvantages of use of the exoscope. Uh, but for, uh, in, in my opinion, uh, is for um, uh, surgery in, of intraventricular tumors uh, with minimal, minimally invasive mean is uh, uh, possible to uh, uh, lend, uh, possible to image processing during the surgery uh, is possible to use fluorescence combined with the um, uh, ICG five ELA. Uh, because uh, in microscope we can we can see fully the 
image of fluorescence and image proce processing in exascope facilitate in improve our uh, visualization of the areas of the fluorescence. Uh, for example, in uh, this exascope uh, is um, Orbea, uh, or be exoscope and is um, IOS Escolab exoscope helps to uh, visualize areas of uh, fluorescence um, after the on white light um, because uh, this exoscope adds uh, the areas of the exoscope to memory and uh, on these areas to the screen um, these areas of the rec remnant parts of the tumors and possible to increase our uh, increase removing of the fully removing of the tumor uh, is associated because the lens system of the standard microscope is uh, so much lenses and um, this all light from the surgical field divide for uh, sensor for for microscope for assistant surgeon for uh, main surgeon. But uh, in exoscope is only one way of the light. In all light from surgical field, uh, go to the lens, to the sensor, and go to the screen, uh, which can be used for all surgical st staff in the operating room. Uh, next, uh, some useful tool for minimally invasive surgery uh, is uh, technology narrowband imaging. Uh, it's useful for uh, visualize uh, the vessels without using uh, any fluorescence uh, because it's used uh, to uh, to peak of the uh, of the wave uh, with the spectrum of the white light is uh, uh, 415 and 514 nanometers is peak of the absorption of the light with the hemoglobin in the erythrocytes. And this imaging is with the, this light. Uh, light is absorbed with vessels and hemoglobin in, into the surgical field, but uh, other nervous tissue reflect this this light, and we uh, can see this higher contrast uh, compared to the other structures. And is a very useful tool for surgery in the uh, narrow surgical field. For example, in this year, in 2024, was, this article was published in the Neurosurgical Focus video and it's examples of the use of this uh, technology. This technology, firstly, was introduced Olympus company into the, uh, for gastro, gastrointestinal surgery and can be used for uh, neurosurgical procedure too. Uh, in our center uh, for uh, last three years was performed 70 cases uh, of the interventricular tumors with uh, using of the exoscope or exoendoscopic procedure. In the uh, all cases, this was 185 cases. Uh, I want to present some cases of the interventricular tumors. And first case uh, is a male, uh, two years, 10 month old male. Uh, without com complaints, after mild TBI was performed CT scan, and after uh, was, which revealed the tumor of the right lateral ventricle of the brain. Uh, you can see preoperative MRI, T1 with contrast, is tumor of uh, right lateral ventricle. Uh, looks like uh, preoperatively in MRI is portplex tumor. Uh, is equipment of the our surgery. Uh, our surgical room is brain lab navigation system, endoscopic setup, exoscopic setup, uh, ultrasound, tulum, yak laser, and exoscope, Vitom 3D, uh, car stores company. Uh, Preoperative pre planning. Uh, instrumentation was used is our, for all, most of the uh, cases of the supratentorial interventricular tumors we use when it's possible, we use uh, uh, tubular retractor systems. Uh, is uh, Vibus company, uh, Vibus uh, tubular retractors, uh, is Vicor Medical Company. Uh, uh, K hole instrumentation, laser, fiber, and other ones. 
is list of the possible to use uh, tubular tractor system in the world that we can use uh, and patient positioning and surgery. Under navig navigation system, uh, I perform skin incision. Small, very small craniotomy, only for introducing of the uh, tubular tractor system because all of our corridor uh, to access to the ventricle system is uh, will be border of the tubular tractor. Uh, small, very small corticotomy. Encephalotomy. Population only for PIA. To introduce the tubular tractor. And we can see CSF and uh, direct access to the tumor. Uh, and our planning was performed to direct access to the pedicle of the heart plexus to coagulation of this pedicle and remove the tumor because adhesion uh, matrix of the tumor in the heart plexus. And we can see the good visualization of the uh, very narrow structure, very narrow space uh, of the ventricle. And use in this space of the uh, laser, tulium like uh, yak laser. Because uh, tumor very vascular, uh, surface of tumor with the bleeding. Um, bleeding and its instrument help to increase uh, bleeding during the surgery. Uh, Exoscope during the procedure uh, adapted to the increased uh, light into the surgical field and uh, increase uh, is this image of the brightness image and facilitate or improve our visualization in surgical field. This tumor was removed piece by piece. And after surgery, uh, exoscopic revision of the ventricle system And see the part of the adhesion of the tumor, region, or his origin, and rest of the section of the tumor. Uh, Postoperative MRI and right, uh, uh, right uh, MRI image. We can see the only very narrow uh, channel of the. Uh, introduced, we introduced the uh, tubular tractor system. And Excel. Uh, second case uh, is an infratentorial tumor. Uh, how I say it, uh, there for most of the supratentorial tumors, interventriculars, into the ventricular system, we use this technique. Uh, 
but for uh, tumors into the fourth ventricle, we use uh, uh, second round. Uh, in second case, a uh, patient uh, eight year, and complaints with development delays, uh, sleep disturbance, and hyperactivity. Uh, in the preoperative MRI, in T1 uh, uh, with contrast, we can see the uh, tumor of the fourth ventricle. Uh, our equipment for this kind of surgery, uh, for this kind of surgery, we use Concord position uh, because it's very easy to see the screen all surgical staff and direct access uh, give to direct access to the tumor and positioning the exoscope along the axis of the brain stem for direct access to the tumor um, preoperative planning uh, this position and use of the exoscope give to us poss possibility to perform a uh, very very minimal and invasive approach to the to the fourth ventricle very small incision was performed it's near to maybe four, near to four centimeters skin incision and the section the midline along the midline and visualize the occipital bone c1 uh, atlant occipital membrane and small borehole and one borehole currently is performed and in these cases, we don't remove the atlant occipital membrane. We use uh, 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 cobra craniotomy technique. Without re removing the, the bone from the surgical field, we use uh, attached bone, uh, bone flap attached to the atlant occipital membrane. Can turn the Visualize very, very clearly. Visualize all structures, and this position will possible only with uh, exoscope because the optic system, uh, optic system of the microscope very big and uh, don't give so possibility to perform the position of the microscope and uh, give access directly access to the tumor uh, along the along the axis of the brainstem, along the axis of the uh, achieve the, the flat angle of view. Tumor was removed in this by piece. Aqueduct. And how we can so this tumor uh, was uh, from the uh, ventricular roof. And it's very, uh, very, can, we can don't access with the use of microscope this area and clearly visualize uh, this uh, part of the ventricle system for the fourth ventricle. sound and we use with use uh, the exoscope is possible to perform very good closure too just a pretty fine right and it's pathology middle of the great form uh, and our published article, uh, case number three, I want to present, uh, published in the January 2024. And the preoperative MRI, you can see the um, tumor in the fourth ventricle. 
patient, uh, like in case before, so placed in concord position. The schematic description of the position of the exoscope and axis of the approach. And anatomical description of the um, lens of occipital osteoplastic anatomy is a um, bone flap attached to the Atlantic occipital membrane to C1. It's nice like cobra anatomy too. This approach is like in case before. It's direct access, access, uh, access to the tumor. And visualize the tumor to the front of the D section from the vessels. In, it was performed inner decompression and coagulation of the surface of the tumor. It was heart plexus tumor to very bleeding with very bleeding surface. And we can clearly visualize the ventricular roof. And remove uh, remnant parts of the tumor from from the ventricular roof. Okay, that was for form closure. Post operative MRI. And pathology. Thank you for attention. Any questions? Thank you very much, Richard Albertovich, for this beautiful lecture and beautiful cases. Okay, the next speaker will be Manuel Encarnacion Ramirez, MD, MSc, MBI, Fellow Neurotrauma, King's Coordinator, UNESCO Anatomy uh, Committee. His report will be the use of exoscope in fourth ventricle tumor and low cost exoscope in low incommitting countries. Thank you so much, Nargisa. Thank you to everybody for being here. For me, it's a huge pleasure. I'm gonna connect my computer. Oh, okay. We're going to start with this one, and we're going to go later from the uh, for ventricle use of the exoscope. Yes. So, once again, this, uh, thank you so much for everybody to be here. Today, we want to talk about the use of low-cost technology in low-income countries. First of all, I don't have any kind of conflict of interest. If I mention any company, it's because they give me some good results. Okay. Secondly, this is no microscope killer yet. Because exoscope is new technology and we know how new technology. In the beginning, they can both coexist, but later one move other. Okay. Secondly, and no less important, remember all the ways take you to Rome. Okay. You can go this way, this way, 
exoscope way, microscope way, but in the end, the most important is the good result of our patient, okay? So there is a lot of countries all over the world who have a lack of uh, proper technology for neurosurgery. That include uh, microscope, exoscope, and so on. So that picture you can see, okay, let's use our imagination. That picture you can see here, that shocked me. That shocked me very much because, ah, uh, 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 yes. Yeah, you see it here? Yeah, that pic uh, picture shocked me. Why? Because you can see some neurosurgeons performing a surgery using a, a normal focus light, the one we use in, in our houses, performing a surgery. You know, they was struggling. They was using what they have in hand, trying to do their best. And that's happened all over the world. And you can see a lot of paper, some very good paper from Professor Samit, talk to us about that. Yeah, but what we can do about them? That was in my third house, I think, already. That was in Congo and Kinshasa. We was performing uh, a workshop using uh, our low, because I'm giving you the trailer first, using our low cost technology. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. So we prefer to call it uh, affordable technology more than low cost technology, because in the end of the day, it's affordable to everybody. And when we use sometimes the low, some people can misunderstand and say, well, the quality. Okay. How can put the, okay, I take it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we was using here the exoscope we was using the exoscope here. So you can see it's a very simple device. I'm gonna explain you later about it. But you can see the magnification is half is over 80 centimeter workflow. So our working distance is gonna be 80 centimeters. It's very useful in the spine cases. Why? Because sometimes, because sometimes when we are performing, uh, for example, a TLE procedure, putting a cage or screw, sometimes with the hammer, we can hit the light of the microscope. In, in the case we have the microscope, and it's quite expensive if we if we break that. So you can see here. So as you can see, the working design, everybody can can focus on the screen. It's very affordable and easy to use. Okay, so a question I remember somebody asked me in a group. Uh, this person asked me, so why I gonna take a low cost exoscope if I can get a second hand microscope for approximately over $15,000? That was the question. Uh, my answer was that. Every de neurosurgical department all over the world have $15,000 because remember the war is outside of our full walls. Okay, so we need to remember there is some places they don't have a normal drill. Okay, so there is places in the world they have a lack of light, that light from normal light. They have problem with the light. When I come in from, sometimes in the hospital, they have problem with the light. So there is a lot of exoscope all over the world, different branches, different a lot, a lot. Yeah, perfect. Very good ones, absolutely, no doubt. But the cost, uh, yeah, that was like a, the wall we need to cross, dealing with the cross of different kind of exoscope. So uh, I explain here, the, I put uh, different prices of different uh, branches of exoscope. This is the citation. This is no information I take from my pocket. You can see the prices and the website of them. So that was my expression when I saw the prices. Yeah, I even cry because talk to a low cost, uh, talk, talk to a low income country about $1 million for get the device is, is quite hard, it's quite hard. So 
What we are doing in the balcony of my house is develop this low cost technology, affordable technology. In the beginning, yeah, we're struggling with some, some parts, but we are coping. We have one right now, we have a 4K camera, we have a, a stabilization system. Of course, it, right now, uh, it's not 3D because we're try to deal to don't decrease the quality without increase the prices. Remember, this is not the James Webb. So the video I'm gonna show you of our this affordable exoscope is not the James Webb uh, videos, okay? So this was in Kinshasa. Yeah, this is the model we're trying to do, we're trying to improve. Uh, and we want to add a power bank source on it. Why? Because this, this technology is focused in low income countries. This is our goal, because the idea is in these countries where they have a problem with the light, um, they don't, they, there's a blackout, still they can continue working with this uh, technology. So those are our first attempt using the exoscope in a spine surgery, you can see here. We we'll start to perform some uh, microscopically um, uh, herniation removal, so until leave with a technique, and later we go on, go on. And you can see this is the average time to the setup of this exoscope because the good part is we can sterilize all together and prepare. It means you have a surgery, you prepare all, and in less than five minutes, all this is done. You can see. So, um, because of course, now you're thinking on how much it costs this. This is a very affordable uh, technology. And the idea is everybody can reproduce them in our home country. So there is exoscope for everybody. That's our goal. That's, that's what we're thinking. So the second question maybe you would ask, and this is like, who wants to be a millionaire? In this case, who wants to perform surgery? Is where we can use this kind of technology? Neurotraumatology, spine surgery, neurovascular, neuro-oncology, and this is the answer. In every field in neurosurgery, we can use the exoscope. Because some people say, in neurotraumatology? Yeah, yeah. We'll start to do some cystinostomy using the exoscope. Because if we have, if we can use the microscope in neurotrauma, we can use the exoscope in neurotrauma too. So we're very proud about, that was a paper we uh, published already, I'm gonna show you now. We submit the manuscript and the reviewer asks us, are you sure we are talking about the same topic? Because exoscope costs over $350,000. And we hit our chest and we feel very proud because it means they don't believe, they don't believe we make this kind of affordable technology with so cheap prices, okay? I hate to use the, the word cheap because some people associate it like you go to supermarket to buy tomatoes. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they didn't believe it, but still we make it. So, okay, too much, too much talking. So let's get ready to rumble because I know you want to see what our small James Webb can do. So that was uh, our fir first attempt. In the beginning, uh, we were afraid to use the gas sterilization because this is important. We can use a gas sterilization to, to prepare the equipment. So you can see here, uh, yeah, baby, now you're gonna say about the light. Yes, that was our first problem because I am showing you the evolution. In the beginning, we we'll have the problem with the light source. Again, my, uh, yeah, it's con conspiracy with my videos. So now we are using uh, a Wi-Fi uh, connection with the exoscope and we connect to the, um, to the tablet, you can see here. The delay was uh, about 0 0.3 milli, uh, uh, milliseconds. Uh, we are not using this one anymore, but because we were afraid to this uh, delay seconds. So you can see here in ACDF. So in, a, in some ACDF, because some people prefer to use the, the loops, so now the question is, if we can have this affordable technology, you can perform the surgery. And even for your team, your team, your, the resident, your second uh, hand surgery, gonna be 
watching the, the TLIF procedure. That was the first one. I'm going to show you now where we we catch the best way to work on it. Yeah, so as you can see here, the video is coming. Yes, perfect. Yeah, I have a bunch of videos there still. Okay, so. So as you can see, let me put it a little more back. You can see here since the beginning of the procedure. Yeah, so. So the initial discectomy, we can start performing with the exoscope. Literally, we go and we, we can focus very well till the posterior wall here. Yes. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So we remove all the discs. Then we go through the uh, posterior longitudinal ligament. You can see it's a very fast. So you can see a middle dissection is very well. You can put even a car there, but in this case, we're gonna put a cage. And in the back, you're gonna see the dura, how uh, clean you can visualize it, okay? So you prepare all both of your end plates. Yeah, and there, simple. So, uh, we have, after we have perf we pass from the spine procedures, so we, then we go from some oncology uh, uh, cases. Yeah, we cleaning the posterior bar uh, posterior border of the end plate, then the posterior longitudinal longitudinal ligaments, the dura, and then all is clean. Okay. Yeah, so in some cases of the cervical giant ependymoma, it's very easy. Um, we like it uh, because we don't have a very good arm stabilization. That's something we need to admit. We are facing that part. So, but for the spine procedure is very, very good for us to use it because it, well, that gives us a very good stabilization. We put it in this position. And that's all. In the beginning, we start to use uh, a, a serum, a uh, stoica, uh, a stem, because we was facing that problem. So we remove the, after we make the, the uh, durotomy, you can see here, you can see here the tumors and we are protecting also, also always with the patching here. The patient, no neuro, so neurological deficit after. Any of our patients don't have any neurological focus after. Here is uh, our first uh, trials, because we're preparing some paper using in trauma cases. Oh, really? Oh, OK. OK. So, okay, yeah, yeah, I think it's better. So here I was showing you one case we're preparing for cystonostomy using the uh, HSCOPE. So uh, we're using the Wi-Fi connection and we were using uh, a, a tablet. A normal tablet you can in this case we use a samsung tablet uh, if you have a lack of even a telephone of course not i don't recommend because it's very small view but you can use any kind of televisor who have a, a direct wi-fi connection so this is some of our papers uh, about the topic of the extra school uh in low and middle countries low income countries So we start to using in spine cases. Let's say we make a comparative study 
about the use of uh, exoscope and the microscope uh, in ACDF surgery. Uh, if you want to any kind of this, um, if you want uh, the, the papers about it, please don't hesitate in contact me. This is my social media here. You write me and I send to you. Yeah. So nervous system sarcosis uh, cases. I'm going to move from here because we're going to have the same problem with the videos. No? Yeah. Oh, no. So also, it's on aneurysm cases. It's very easy for use. Why? Because for in these cases, in the anterior circulation aneurysm, you can perform with good illumination. Uh, some of the problem we, we face is what's the reflex with the light, okay? So because in some of the videos, you're going to see we have a lot of reflex. So after the aranoic dissection, you can see here both the optic nerve. Sorry, here you can see the optic nerve here. So after we open the cistern, then, uh, sorry, I didn't put you more, more in the beginning, but after you open on the cistern, you relax and you have a lot of spaces. And then you can clip your aneurysma very easily. Till now, we perform uh, only anterior circulation aneurysm using the exoscope. All these videos are using our. Okay, I'm gonna try to put it here in this monitor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I need to connect something here. And then what? Like this? Yeah. It's okay. Can I see it here? It's okay. Ah, Alexander. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So I was saying the price, and that's how the introduction of our low access home. Because maybe some of you are gonna ask, what is that? Yeah. In the beginning, because uh, we use a microphone arm, this is what it is. This is what we had in that in that moment, and we face it with that. We, we got the solution. But sometimes we need to be proactive. If from the heaven falls lemon, learn how to make lemonade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was a Wi Fi, uh, the Wi Fi exoscope, and we were using it here. Yeah, it's on a spine surgery. Remember, that was in the beginning, and we were struggling with that, okay? Yeah. So in this case, we perform a cystonosomy. Uh, we're gonna we're still preparing this uh, paper from uh, publication because we don't have too many cases of the exoscope in trauma cases. This is our experience, our the, our the papers we wrote about it. This is the set of cases we have all uh, in different countries. We have this, uh, we have neurocystic sarcosis. You can see here. You can see the kist, the aneurysm here. Something we really like it, and even from training, is the nerve graph. Because uh, remember, sometimes, even from uh, nerve graph suturing or from uh, this herniation removal, we use a microscope. But if we have a um, Kinebo, a Pentero 900, we use the bag. And some surgeons only use a microscope in the microsurgical stage. It means they're using a bag. This bag cost 
minimum fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. So if we calculate all the bad people in, in the neurosurgical department are using per procedure for use a microscope, 15, 20 minutes, that's the pain. We are not now knowing we are spending a lot of back and that's not very friendly with the environment. So you can see here in the graph suturing using eight zero material. For graph suturing is, is very affordable, it's, it's very useful. Some surgeons prefer, uh, prefer to use the loops, but with this magnification, it's very easy to use. As you can see with this magnification, it's very easy to use. Sorry, this is the first uh, part I, I already uh, moved forward in this one, you can see here. This is the big nerve and the donors coming from here. Yeah, again, remember, uh, uh, you, you see the, uh, the light reflex? Yeah, this is a, a problem we're facing, the light reflex. Some of our cases, this is my colleague Peralta in Dominican Republic using the exoscope here. Of course, advantage and disadvantage because if you like the roses, deal with the spine. This kind of technology still is in development. Uh, our technology don't have a 3D perception. This is something we, we are facing it because the idea is to try to teach uh, how uh, low income countries can use this kind of technology and reproduce in their hometown. Uh, the incorporation of 3D, well, we need to see how it's gonna be in the future. Uh, right now we have a 4K uh, the, uh, uh, definition. We're using a better cameras. The limitation of course, uh, we're facing with the manual movement because we need the very strong arm uh, mechanical movement because sometimes uh, you don't need to move even in millimeters in your focus way. So we need a very stable um, mechanical arm. Sometimes, yeah, of course, uh, the neurosurgeon have uh, vertigo, headshot uh, from the use of prolongate uh, glasses. So in conclusions, uh, we use this kind of low cost, affordable technology. We can use gas sterilization. It's easy to move between hospitals because the idea is you put it in your backpack, you take it and you go. Perform the surgery, go to another place. The limitation of the deep perception because it's, this is not a 3D. The learning curve is high. Do not of the neurosurgical department have the use of, low, of this uh, exoscope technology. In the end, and uh, no less important, I, I like to remember this and I want to everybody remember this. One day when we are not here, we will be what we have done and in the way we change other people's life. Thank you. Question, because I'm gonna move forward. No question. Professor? Now let's move for the use of uh, exoscope in for ventricle tumors. Again, no conflict of interest. We're using a very high quality uh, exoscope, no kind of conflict of interest. This is no microscope killer, jet, or maybe yes. Both of them can coexist together in harmony to see which one. And in the end, and in the end we will see uh, which give us better result. Till now, I am falling in love of the from the exoscope technology because it's a very very useful 
uh, the ergonomic of the surgeon is uh, is brilliant because with the exoscope, with the microscope, you are attached to the microscope. I explain because you need to move. You need to move, and sometimes you need to be in rigid position. This is something we don't have with the exoscope. Both of ways to get to Rome, both ways to get to the good result of our patient, okay? I'm gonna move forward because we already talked about that, okay? So, our main goal. Our main goal is show the benefit of the exoscope in four ventricles pathologies. We cannot be talking about fourth ventricle tumor without we don't talk about the uh, anatomy because remember anatomy is a science of just confirm what you know. You know anatomy in surgery you say yeah yeah of course this is I know that's it. okay. This is not science of discovery because if in surgery you discover it means you don't know anatomy. So this is a sagittal view of the fourth ventricle. Uh, we're going to see, of course, we have here a uh, illustration way and the, a very good uh, preparate from uh, Professor uh, Roton. Okay. So, this is the way we're going to use for the, in our cases, in four ventricles cases, because some people, maybe not too much right now, uh, perform the transbermian approach, but we, in, in our case, we perform a teloveral approach. So teloveral approach, as you can see, is like, okay? I'm gonna explain now in, in the position we're gonna talk about it, okay? Yeah, so. Remember the four ventricles have like a, a rhomboid form. If you have a roof, we have a, a wall, we have borders, we have angles, okay? As you can see here, we're gonna have the limitation of the roof. This is the sagittal view, but remember, this is not in the way we're gonna see during surgery, okay? So here we have the superior medullal bellum here as of the roof, and also up there, you're gonna have the superior cerebral peduncle here, okay? Uh, cerebral peduncle here. Here you're gonna have the in the inferior medullal uh, uh, roof here, and you have the, the telacoroidia. This is sagittal view, okay? so. What I say, if we see it in more proper way, we're gonna see here the superior medullal um, roof here. Then we're gonna have the uh, inferior pedunculan uh, cerebellum here. Then we're gonna have the superior pedunculan cerebral there. Here we have the inferior medullal bellum here, and there the telacoroidea. This part here, all this, all this limited here, all this limited here, the lateral races. And if we go more there, we're gonna find the foramen of, yes, Lushka, perfect. Why? Because remember, Magendi, middle, M, middle, lateral, Lushka, there, lateral races. So again, you have here, we are seeing from inferior to superior. And we have here, uh, Obex, Magendi, Magendi here, and you see all that there is the lateral races. Remember, uh, maybe for the young residents, somebody remember who's that? Yeah, exactly. This is the tonsilla. In the way we need to remember this telubral approach, it's like we open the mouth. Ah, and we're gonna find the ovula there in the center. And we're gonna have the tonsilla, the amygdala there, okay? It's very characteristic. Then we move. And then we have here the telacoroidia there, okay, telacoroidia. Then we cut, we cut, sorry. Then we cut and we have full access to the lateral races here. Lateral races there, and we go from Lushka. You see all the access you have there. Lateral races again. We're seeing the floor of the fourth ventricle. Remember, middle line, colical facial here. Okay. If we see it in anterior view, in anterior way, and do we, this is the anterior perspective. We have the pons, we have the medulla. This is here, fourth ventricle. There, this is fourth ventricle. 
And this here, we are watching now, we are watching the roof of the third ventricle. We're watching the roof of the third ventricle from anterior to posterior, okay? Because from anterior to posterior, we remove the floor, okay? Here. Yeah. And you remember when we talk about the lateral races here, we talk about the lateral races here, and look here. This part is that one, but we are seeing in different perspective. We saw that one from posterior to anterior, and this one from anterior to posterior, and we, and we remove the part of the of the floor. So here you can see the uh, coral plexus, superior medullal bellum here. Remember, it's roof, roof. We also, again, we need to remember the, the way we're seeing and in the way we'll see in the patient, because this is if the patient is above us, okay? But we're gonna see in the, in the real scenario now. Again, look the lateral races, okay? Remember, we saw the lateral races here, lateral races here. This is the lateral races from posterior to anterior, and we just move the tonsils. Lateral races. If we remove all the uh, all the all the roof of the fourth ventricle, the cerebellum, all. And here we see the end of the lateral races. Here we didn't remove anything. We only remove the anterior wall. We remove part of the uh, pons medulla, okay, and we remove the floor. Again, lateral races here. Now from anterior to posterior. Is, this is very important to understand in 4D, the fourth ventricle, and we're gonna know where we are and where we will go depending on the pathology. If we're gonna go from the, uh, if we go if we go for the superior part of the fourth ventricle, or we will go more lateral to the uh, CP angle, okay? Lateral races. So here we have the inferior medullal bellum, Again, we have the ovula, and now we are seeing we're gonna go from our uh, approach from posterior approach from the fourth ventricle. We need to remember the the mouth open where we're gonna have the ovula. We're gonna have the tonsils. Okay. The name of our approach is gonna be telovirial approach. Why we don't go transvermian approach right now? Because you know after that a big amount of patients have mutism, ataxia. Okay. So no, this is not, at, at least if the tumor is in the vermis, yeah, uh, we can, we need to go there. We need to, there is no a way out to take it there. Okay, so now we are seeing posterior to anterior. Here, this is the telacoroidia. Here we have here the ovula. We move the tonsil. We have the telobella junction here. We can cut this part and you remember if we go in this way, we are going for the lateral races, okay? You look at the coral plexus, like find the, uh, uh, follow the coral plexus, like follow the bony, uh, Dorothy, right? It's Dorothy, yeah, okay. We follow the bony and then in this case, we follow the coral plexus and we know where we are going, okay? Yeah, so after we remove, just to, to remind again, ovula, Tonsils, remember, if we're going to a telovelar approach, it's gonna be upside down. We're gonna see it later now. So we remove the uh, telacoroidia here. We have, the, you remember who's that? What's that here? Yeah, this is the choroid plexus, perfect. And you have here the inferior medullal bellum there, okay? Here we have uh, Magendi and the obits. So. Again, tonsils, ovula, telacoroidia, tonsils again to remember the ovula, inferior bellum uh, here, telacoroidia, choroid plexus. Follow the choroid plexus, Dorothy. Okay. Then we're gonna have the peduncle, cerebellar peduncles here. The uh, who remember who's that? Inferior medullal medullal. Here, that there is the aqueduct, okay? 
Okay, in that illustration, we will see the floor of the fourth ventricle. Remember, we have the middle middle line where we're going to have the uh, middle uh, fascicle there. Colical facialis. Uh, in some cases, don't believe we're going to find the colical facialis like this groove, okay? Because if the patient has a tumor or the patient has a uh, high ICP, it's going to be smooth, okay? Then we're going to have the trigon of the uh, hypoglossal, trigon of vago, area postrema. And this is the in the way we don't want to see it. Here, remember, this is the nucleus of the abducens. This is the facial nerve here. So, yeah. So if we need always we need to see the MRI of our patient to to attend with approach we're gonna perform. For example, you can see here the body of the fourth ventricle and the pos uh, posterior superior recess. Here, Lushka, the lateral recess. Magendi Fogame here, fourth ventricle, the rhomboid. And the again here you can see the superior medullary bellum, magendi foramen here again. Okay, so the televeral approach uh, as uh, we was talking, we're gonna need to move the pica. The pica gonna be our um, lagmar in the way we're gonna go there. Okay, we're gonna follow. Now in this case we're gonna follow the pica, and then we can cut in different way. We can perform uh, unilateral or we can go bilateral. Depends how much space we want to make in this cellular approach. Depends how much up we want to go. And this is uh, some cases of the use of the exoscope in third ventricle pathology. You can see here. Yeah. So this is the right now time. This is the surgeon. This is the exoscope. And this is the microscope because right now the micro the the exoscope is moving forward because they especially for the ergonomic because the surgeons don't need to be in this position or changing position and that is a waste of stamina for surgeon so the possibility to have a big working area is priceless because sometimes uh, some surgeon uh, passing the instrument between can hit the light of the microscope. So let's get ready to rumble. This is uh, a five years old uh, kid, male. He had uh, three months with the in the in that time. He had a, a progressive three months of paresthesia, paraplegia in in four extremity. Okay, he have. Two or four, two or five of in all of them. You can see here, you can see the mass there in the fourth ventricle. So the approach from this case was at, I can see here, we we opt for a telobedal approach. And the classic position is the conquer. Why not sitting position? Of course not. Why not the sitting position? For a lot of reasons we have. Air embolism, also the stamina of the of the surgeon in the sitting position. For that, uh, we're not using too much the uh, semi-sitting or sitting position in this kind of cases. Yeah, that's the conquer. For the young one who don't remember, that was a supersonic uh, plane. So again, this is another case just showing you the conquer position and some of the variation of it. Some uh, modification of the concord position, it's called like a military variant, when they uh, uh, you're gonna flex more the mental of the patient, and you can have this position, okay? So in this case, what we need to do when we flex more the mental of the, the head of the patient, we're gonna relax more back the shoulders, for example. Yeah, it's, they have a big imagination. It looks like the conquer. Yeah, we relax the shoulders more here and we put it more back because we want to avoid the, the venous compression. Narrow monitoring in, in all these cases. I put 
this volume down. Yeah, so middle line incision, we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna calculate from the inion to C2. I explain from the C2 is gonna be our inferior border. This pain, the, uh, the tricky part of this patient is he had, uh, he has um, a deficit of factor seven of coagulation. So yeah, we, we don't want this, this kind of patient bl bled too much, too, no. So again, as you can see here, after the um, plane dissection, we make it from by plane by plane, then we go middle line incision. Oh, it's not there. So, what we need to achieve is a very clean way, very clean view of the inion here. C1, C2. We don't gonna touch C2. Don't need it. But just to have like a a, a good landmark, okay. Then we're gonna make a. This is the caniotum. Okay, so we're gonna make a craniotomy, and then we're gonna remove the arc, the posterior arc of C1. Some people are uh, prefer to make a um, laminoplasty, but we make a laminectomy. Remember, you need to be very careful uh, when, when you are making the esqueletization of the C1, because remember 1.5 to maximum, we're gonna have the vertebral artery there, so be careful in case you don't have uh, ultravocal. So there we are performing the lamin laminotomy the C1. Why we make the laminotomy? Because we need to have a space. Because in this case, uh, the the tumor go also to the to the medulla. Is 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 go in all direction. I think it's over here, and the patient also have a a, a huge syringe in all all uh, spinal cord. Beg your pardon. Only only we make in C1. We was thinking in go more down because the syringe of the patient was huge and we was, but in the end of the day, you know, the syringe, after you remove uh, the mass, the depression, uh, the syringe is gonna, gonna go back, it's gonna, gonna decrease. So remember about the craniotomy, we can make uh, two, two bone holes there and go in this direction. Uh, and in the um, posterior border, posterior border of the uh, foramen magnum, we make manually. We don't go with the with the drill there. We go with carry some, because remember, in this part is not flat. This posterior posterior border of the foramen magnum is not flat. It's go in this direction, so the drills cannot go uh, uh, in in good way in that in 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 that trajectory and can can harm the dura. So we avoid that. The dura classica dura opening in which way? Well, it's gonna depend. Some authors prefer to making if a uh, way, and some of them prefer to making u way. You can see this is the a u way, and this is the e way. Um, paying attention here to to some of the veins of the um, marginal veins from the to the transverse sinus. And you can see here, this is the, the position we're gonna see it, our patient. Move the tonsil, we have here the telacroidia, inferior medullary bellum. Okay. You, you, you can do two stuff with the dura. One is we can uh, make a sutury all over around to fix it because the problem with the bleeding in the uh, in the dura in these cases is you make a coagulation with the bipolar and it's gonna retract. And remember, it's gonna be very important the closer, uh, the, the close part in this kind of cases. 
So again here, this is our goal target. The good part of some of the brain of the fourth ventricle tumors is they're so big, they all make themselves the telovelal approach. Then so it means they dissect uh, from uh, anterior to posterior and make your life more easy. For example, this is here. You can see this, this is the cisterna magna here. We're using the echoscope with the robotic arm. And through the cisterna magna, you can see the dura here. And through the cisterna magna, you can see the tumor. We was uh, very afraid it's gonna be a malignant tumor, but thanks God the uh, and the histology result, there was a, a astrocytoma. You can see here. So we're gonna have the tonsil here, the tonsil here, and the tumor is all going over the let's say over the top because it's going. Uh, out from the telobera part. Yes. Different option to the cisterna magna. You can fix it with the small clips. You can fix it or you can make one suture to have it separated, okay? So you can see this one, remember, we're seeing this is the top of the patient here, the head of the, the top of the patient here, the orbits and the medulla is there, okay? You can see both of the tonsils are separate themselves by the tumors. Always use uh, the patchy dissection. Okay, yeah, so you can see here, first, some bipolar opening to histology. Again, so the good part was in this case was a, a, a pilocyte, a astrocytoma. I'm gonna go move forward. Some people don't like to use the, uh, the CUSA in the in the fourth ventricle but the cusa is like a car a car can be a weapon if you don't use in the in the proper way if you don't use privileges can kill people the cusa also if you know what you're doing if you know how to use it yeah you can use it there not in the floor okay not in the floor not in the floor the floor of the fourth ventricle you're gonna operate with the eyes you know how you operate with the eye you just watch it you don't touch it okay so again, so uh, even even with the um, the the attach of the tumor from the floor of the four ventricle, we were very careful. Some people like this kind of patchy uh, here with the cotton, but the cotton is rough. Sometimes the cotton can be rough from from the floor from the floor of the four ventricle. So we can also use the gloves. You, as we, we make the, the bypass to have the um, uh, uh, visualization area, you can use this, uh, this glove part and put it down to have like a dissection plane. This is another case you can see here in the pica, always follow the pica, the tonsils, tonsils here, orbits. This is the part in we can, uh divide the telebera approach in this uh simple stage simple steps you need to to focus in the beginning like let's say like a normal telebera approach because in sometimes when they we have a big tumor it's more complicated to have the normal anatomy this is the postoperative scan of the patient right now uh, we well, of course, pro and contras. Uh, the, the one of the contra of this, uh, the bad part of this kind of technology is no, they are not very affordable on all on all the places, uh, and is a reality. It's very good to operate with a lot of technology, yeah. But sometimes we need to think how much technology we need. Who is operating the technology or you? 
because when we, of course, we use navigation just in the beginning there, but when doctors depend too much in navigation and all the system, all fancy system, we have a decrease of the anatomy knowledge. And of course, primum non nocere, the most important is the patient, okay? So in our conclusion, the best part was this. The patient right now is start to therapy. Of course, that was with permission. The patient right now is in therapy. Is start to kicking a ball. Yeah, it's a big stuff. He's kicking the ball. Remember, the patient was in the lay down in bed for a, a, like for one month and a half in bed doing nothing, just in bed. Now he's moving the extremity also. And it's a, it's a big goal for, for all of us. And again, remember, one day when you are not here, we will be what we have done. And in the way we change other people's life. Thank you. Question? I know I am far, but I am not so far from home. Dinner. <laughs> Lunch, yeah, okay. Okay, thank you so much. Hold on, Manuel, are you there? Are you there, Manuel? Hey, John, how are you? Manuel, are you? can I, yeah, I have a question, Manuel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm not a neurosurgeon. Uh, I'm the head of neurosurgical TV, and, and we really uh, appreciate being able to televise this. Uh, you know, just on Ipe's word that it's a new, as a technology that's going to take a greater hold in the thank you, thank you, Jim. In, in the neurosurgery operative suite. Now, exoscopes have been around for a while, right? Beg your pardon? Exoscopes have been around for a while, right? Uh, no, well, in neurosurgery, we, we can say it's new still because I have maybe 15 years in the, in the field. So it still is new here. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's a, yeah, steep learning curve for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that's a goal. That's a goal. See if we can spread this kind of technology all over the world. Okay. Well, I guess on the internet is a good start. Yeah, you absolutely. Aware, aware of what's going on, and I just I uh, just read an article yesterday from University of South Carolina. They do a lot of exoscopes, uh, so it is taking hold in various parts of the world. What areas of the world do you see it developing more than other areas? Do you see one area that's developing quicker? Uh, well, uh, on, on use of exoscopes. Uh, I, I think it can be used all over the world, this kind of technology, because it's half, right now, it's half much more pro than contrast. And about the uh, affordable, low-cost technology, uh, I think it can be focused till now in low-income countries, uh, in Latin America, some part of Asia, some part of Africa, is going to depend. Because, of course, everybody wants the best. But right. as I always say, uh, you cannot have in Burkina Faso a Kinebo, with all respect. For example, I am um, in the south of my country. You don't have a microscope. You don't have any kind of microscope for perform neurosurgery. So you cannot ask in the south of Dominicana to have a Kinebo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard. You get my point, right? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, John. Maybe then some other questions in the online audience. Okay. So uh, now we finish our lecture part. Uh, at 
3 a.m. Uh, it will be a master class in the seven operating room. Uh, Ive Turian and uh, Ikim of UTLCH will show us the exis uh, the work of Exascope. And after then, it will be the uh, cadaver um, lab course in our 3D cadaver lab uh, with the VTOM 3D Exascope. Okay, so now it's uh, lunchtime. Okay, I'd like to uh, make an announcement right now. Uh, the didactic portion of the presentation is now over. However, we have a representative of a low cost uh, microscope, uh, operative microscope from SANMA that I think is going to give a little demonstration. The didactic lecture is over. This is optional, uh, and it, we just want to get want to show people the types of equipment that's possible to get are you there are you there uh, are you there sanma is sanma there let me see if he can give a short presentation hello ram are you there perhaps not Okay, I guess we'll have to wait. Should we wait till tomorrow, Ram, to give the presentation of your product? Thank you. I guess we will. I guess we'll wait till tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Tomorrow we will. Uh, it will be a live surgery. Uh. So now uh, a uh, the plan a little bit changed, and now will be the small presentation of uh, our uh, exoscope by. Oh, okay, okay, I was wrong. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. I saw that Manuel was doing his exoscope and uh, it's a fantastic beginning. This is where I started from about 15 years back. And we worked with Calstos Vitom for four years. And then we worked with Esculap. I wrote a chapter in the digital surgical uh, anatomy textbook on uh, exoscopes. We call it hyperscopes because we wanted to fuse AI deep learning, machine vision, everything into the exoscope. So this is the beginning. So we have uh, understood that collaborating with the West may not be the greatest thing because uh, because of the CE certifications and the FDA licenses and all this, every single move takes more than six months. And this is, uh, in fact, really stupid. I'm sorry to use this, but uh, when you collaborate with any European company or an American company, even the smallest idea which can be in, done in one, one week takes six months to one year because they have to get the licenses. And uh, thank God these licenses are not there when real microscopes and all these things were uh, you know, started to establish. Otherwise, we wouldn't be with anything. We would still be operating with some spoons or something. So, so we started to do this in India now. And India... Of course, there are licensing uh, authorities, but it's much more easier and much more better. That I, This is what I find, and I'm sure it's the same in Russia and many other countries where we are not completely stupid so that we stop all progress. So we have started to do this, and with this company, we have started to do um, the exoscope. So they will show you the Sanma Yoko, and the Sanma Santwana, the Yoko is an exoscope, 4K 3D exoscope. And the Santwana is a robotic endoscopic holder. So both we are using it right now and it's amazing. So we are looking at the second generation of it right now. Uh, so I think they will present on this. Uh, Ram, if you are ready with your presentation, please go ahead. Rajkumar. 
know, right now the exoscopes are bulky. You guys will have to bring it to a 4K camera like what uh, Manuel has done, a very small camera. This is exactly what we need. But 3D with high resolution. And we hold it with a robot. A robot, now the cobots are less than $15,000. I know it's too high, but, you know, uh, you could, instead of buying a car, you could buy it. <laughs> Maybe you could sell your house. This is, uh, you know, when I went to Nepal, when it starts, I could stop it. But when I went to Nepal, you know, I was there for 14 years and uh, I, re I realized that most important thing is my work. So what I did is I took all my inheritance, everything that I have, and I got an intraop MRI. And I, I of course, I, I just participated in this. So there were other people, other stakeholders, but we had a theater that was better than most theaters on the planet and in Nepal. So we had an intraoperative three test LIMR. We had the OAM2. We had uh, the Carlstos OR1, the pneumatic point setter arm. Anything that you can think of in any modern theater, we had it. It was, in, I'm talking about 2016. And it is possible. If you ask me, is it difficult? Yes, it's difficult. It's taking a lot of risks. It's going right out of your comfort zone. It is putting your, you know, everything personal. You are putting on, on a gamble and then you are trying to do this. But believe me, um, what Manuel is doing is what I did 14, 15 years back. And right now, I don't think I can do that because right now I want to be at the cutting edge, not, not where, you know, things are beginning. I don't have time. Manuel has a lot of time. He's very young, okay? And I'm sure he will be at the cutting edge very soon because if you are doing this, now he's, he's, he, I see that he's making 4K. 3D is just two cameras together. Two cameras together, you have 3D. So it's once you have a, a 4K good camera, HD or 4K 3D, 4K camera, and then making two cameras together is 3D. It's nothing big. And having the right software. So remember, these. I'm sure within one year or two years, you will have a very low-cost 3D solution. And a robot, right now, the robots are very, very cheap. It is, a, it is an amazing era where the universal robot is nobody wants it. It's a robot. There are cobots. You see, there are cobots which can feed people on the, the Kinova arm that we took was from, you will not believe it, it is used yeah. to feed a person on a wheelchair. A quadriplegic person on the wheelchair, the Kinova arm takes a, takes a glass and feeds it to the, the person or takes a spoon and feeds it to the person. That arm fits on a wheelchair. And this is the arm that we started using for mounting a small camera. It's amazing because it's a cobot. It's a small cobot with absolutely small footprint. The Frank Franca Emika Panda, it is a fantastic robot. Look, at, look up, it's a fantastic cobot. We have it in the theater, Manuel must have seen it many times. So, it is an industrial robot, cobot actually, small industrial cobot. You just program it. I'm sure in Russia you will have a lot of programmers who can do fantastic stuff, just like in India they can do it. So, you take it and then program it to use a whole endoscope or a camera or robotic tools and you will see the difference. Okay. So, don't think these things are not possible in your country. Or these things are too advanced. Nothing is too advanced. Okay? It's just here. Everything is here. Was he able to join? Yeah, the Medinians. Yeah, 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 I think uh, he stepped away. But I don't know what they have planned to do. Do we, are we going to do a formal presentation of the uh, 
of the equipment of Sanma. Are we going to do that? That's what I wanted to do. If not, we can ask pointed questions of Ram or one of the Sanma people. I, what do you think? You think that would do okay for today? And tomorrow, yeah, I think yeah, he's yeah, do yeah John, if uh, if he's finding it difficult to present it, uh, then it's yeah, okay. We can do it, we we can do it, it tomorrow. Yes. We can do it tomorrow if he's not ready to do it. You ready? Yeah. Hey, sir, doctor, I have to show the Yoko or Santona, doctor. Which one, doctor? Uh, maybe you can show Yoko first because Santona yeah. had shown it. Yeah, please. It. Please. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Okay. Introduce yourself and please show your equipment. Okay. Okay. Just. Uh, So this company was ready when no company was ready to accept an exoscope. This company, they were ready to make an exoscope from India. We had a lot of difficult times because it was not easy making an exoscope in India, but now I'm proud of what we have done. And I'm sure very soon we'll be not one of the best, the best exoscope on the planet. Because the second generation, I'm very, very confident that it is way better than a lot of other exoscopes on the planet. You will see the first generation now. I am probably not allowed to talk too much about the second generation, maybe, because I have NDS signed with them. But definitely, I can tell you that it will have a lot more features. Yeah. Yeah, this is their microscope the neurosurgical microscope, Ocula. Can you show us the Yoko? Yeah, yes, yes, doctor. There is some connection issue. Just, just uh, sorry, sorry for the day. <clears throat> trouble. Doctor. They already have a fantastic uh, uh, microscope with a 3D head. And uh, it is one of the only microscopes which in from made from India, which had a 3D head and uh, it had a 3D camera. <laughs> So we were dissecting. So we asked them, why don't make an exoscope? So that is how they started. They started from a low resolution model and then they made a very high resolution model. Now the resolution is uh, as good or even better than the EOS. It's crazy, but uh, it is the same camera, I suppose. But the resolution is excellent. I have um, a question. I have a question. I uh, do you, you're very confident in this technology of exoscope. And you feel it's going to take the place of the opera microscope eventually? Yeah, I mean, it won't take much time, John. I mean, the young, young guys, for them, they are not trained under the microscope for a long time. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy for them to make the shift. For us, I've operated so many years with the microscope, so I feel comfortable with the microscope. Not anymore. I mean, in the last two years, maybe I would have used the Kinevo couple of times, maybe three, four times. That's it. Otherwise, I, I, I use the exoscope for everything. I'm sure Sufiano also now shifting completely to the exoscope. Once you know, today I'll be demonstrating the exoscope uh, in the OR, and you will see how it is different from the microscope. I can clearly show you. Maybe we can compare it, but I can clearly show you how the exoscope is so much more different from the microscope. So it is not the future, it is the present. Now the future will be very different because the future will have these exoscopes, digital image married to AI, navigation, deep learning, machine vision, everything, and making a scope which nobody has ever dreamt of, which a scope which can tell you where are you, a scope which can probably show you each structure behind what you're dissecting where you're dissecting, and a scope which can tell you whether the tumor is out or not. So this is, uh, this is the future, and it's going to come very soon. It's not going to take much time. Yeah, I, let, me, let me just show the news. This final study indicates benefits of switching from microscope to 3D exoscopes in spine surgery. So that's one area, uh, and I'm sure there are other areas, too, that are switching. Yes, yes, yes. We, we, we just showed skull base and uh, vascular, very difficult cases and anastomosis, everything with the exoscope. We just showed now. And I want these youngsters to realize that no more taking your hand out. 
your hand stays in and the exoscope dances to your tune. Today I'm going to show it to you in the OR. Okay? The exoscope dances the way you want. If you learn how to use it, you, your hands are always in the field. No more trying to focus, no more trying to zoom, no more trying to move the, exo move the microscope with your hands. One hand here struggling this, that way, whether it is balanced or not. No. You, the exoscope dances if you know how to make it dance. Okay? And you will be with your two hands. You'll be always operating. So if you have, an, if you have a rupture, imagine if you have a rupture. You will want your hands right in the field. You would not want one hand to take off, zoom out, zoom in. So both my hands inside, I have much more confidence. If I have my assistant sitting, looking at the screen instead of struggling when I move the microscope, he also has a lot of confidence. So it is, it is really different. So today, I'm going to show in the OR how that works. And maybe... The youngsters seated here, we can have a beginning. It's the world's first exoscope conference. When I went in 2019, 2018, just before the corona to Turkey, Dr. Yasagil, you know, we were playing football at Yugur Ture's place with his sons and a few other neurosurgeons. And Yasagil was watching. We came back after the football game. Yasagil told us the first microscope session in the WFNS meeting had only four participants. Four. Okay. Four participants. So we have maybe 12, three times that. So that the change to happen will not take much time. Each of these young people, they go back to their place with an idea that there is something called exoscope and it is better than a microscope. They will have it made anywhere in the world and they will do it. Manuel has already started it. All of you guys, okay, you go it and start it, and it'll take. It'll, it's a flame. The wildfire is starting. So, and plus the technology is coming. So it's already there. In fact, most of the technology is there. So you just have to, you know, use uh, it. I, yeah, I, I have a question. You know, er ergonomically, I do you notice an appreciable difference? Appreciable difference. Uh, oh after yes! You, after I mean, you finish the case, do you feel like they have more energy than usual? I yeah, mean, the ergonomically, I am just sitting down like I'm sitting to read a newspaper, and I'm looking at the screen. I'm not standing in you know fantastic Kama Sutra positions, or uh, my assistant is not standing in those positions, and both of us are sitting down just like we are sitting and reading a newspaper on a Saturday. We are relaxed. Everything is on the screen. The magnification is unbelievable. The stereo depth is unbelievable. And at the end of surgery is much more refreshing. Okay. And how much ever long the surgery goes, if you want to rotate the scope around and see each angle, you really don't need to do a lot of uh, pulling and pushing around. So ergonomically, it is, um, it is anybody's dream. But the only thing is you must learn how to operate it. It's like a Ferrari. If you don't know how to drive it, well, it, there's a diff, there is a problem. So I took one month. So I took it to the lab and I started in pumpkins first. Then I started with other things, then cadaver dissection, chicken wing anastomosis, then brought it for simpler cases in the OR, then took it for more complex and more complex until now I don't need the I have the kinevo standing in my theater. Okay, and I don't use it at all. I really don't use it. I so if you have the kinevo standing there and you don't use it, that tells a lot about the exoscope. Very good. I Hello, think. doctor. Uh, can you can I play now, sir? Yes, yes. please. Yeah. Uh, is it visible, sir? Not yet. No, it's not visible. Not visible. Okay. Or you can send, if it is not uh, happening, then you can send ah. the video to me and I can transfer it to my computer. Ah, okay, okay, please. Now. Yeah, it's coming, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's coming. Ah.
And one more thing, this is a little bit of a controversy. I will tell you something. You guys are one of the finest brains in your country. Those who go as neurosurgeons would be one of the finest. So what happens? A businessman who is not as half as intelligent as you will make a thousand times more money than you would ever in your lifetime. Okay? And then you will live to regret it. So when you say financial interest, if you are using your brain with a company, I have never till now, I've not taken a single rupee from anybody. But I believe that is stupidity because if you are innovating and if you have a source of income from your innovations, it is a source of joy and it also sidelines neurosurgery as a passion, not as something that you need money for. You remember this, okay? Always remember this. This is a lot different from what everybody will tell you. Everybody will tell you, no, when he said financial implication, I was like that, okay? That doesn't mean that I was, I'm corrupted today or I have, I have it on my conscience that I'm taking. My ideas, I have never patented it, never. And I don't think I will ever patent it. It's because everybody, I want them to... In improve on it. But if I, I'm working with a company, I've worked with so many companies, not a single dollar I have taken. I have never asked anybody to sponsor my trip or sponsor anything for me, nothing. Okay? But later on, I might ask them. Okay? Now, <laughs> uh, I mean, I can see you eating Bon appetit. I can see you eating on the... Uh, uh, Ram Kumar? Yeah, yes, doctor. I'm hearing you, doctor. Yeah, yeah. Instead of your uh, Yoko uh, presentation, I'm eating... What are you eating? <laughs> we are seeing you on the big screen. <laughs> Hamburger! <laughs> yes, sir. That's uh, having the soups. I'm with uh, this one, sir. Uh, Desh Pandey. Oh, okay. We caught you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Please uh, show us your presentation as, as. Okay, doctor. Can you share your screen and show? Yes, us yes, doctor. I, I just I am uh, sharing the mobile. That's that I am some difficulties. That's just okay. For... That's why we're here practicing. Can I show it again, doctor? Sure. Yes, please. I mean. Again, meaning we did not see it the first time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it time. Take your time. Is it visual, sir? Not this is yet. the Sun My Ocula, the older microscope. I am not able to see the presentation. Ram, if it is a problem, then what I would suggest is you send the presentation to me. Uh, I'll take uh, it uh. on WhatsApp. Okay, doctor. And then I will put it on my screen and then show it tomorrow or sometime. Is that okay? Okay, okay, doctor. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, doctor. I'll complete the complete uh, presentation, doctor. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thank you. Right. So. Thank you, I won't comment with, with you too because uh, it's one one of um, uh, one of the things or adventures of the exoscope is uh, is possible possible uh, use uh, the, um, use a, uh, assistant yeah assistant yeah, is much, much better assistant but uh, it's not possible use uh, in microscope because uh, monocular mon one for example one assistant uh, ocular is monocular mm -hmm. is for example for head mm -hmm. is uh, is now is exoscope is possible possible completely full yes what full. you see is what the assistant sees yes uh, and you, you and i see your video and you working with four hands mm -hmm. Four hands is very good, very well, more better, much better. But it's possible, possible more. Well, for six hands, it's possible. Yes, it's uh, because uh, all screen for all all the stuff, the same all thing. stuff is, is possible. Possible additional uh, 
one, two, three assistants, uh, for example, two, one, two, three nurses, yes. uh, for, for example. This is uh, one of the adventures for Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yes, because uh, it's very useful, very easy uh, use uh, for um, this exoscope, this microscope. Yes, yes, absolutely. What you said is absolutely right. Any questions for you guys, the younger guys who have not used the exoscope? Any questions, any comments mm -hmm. as to why there are a lot of guys who ask me, why should I change from the microscope? Or any comments, any questions, anything that you guys have? You saw the exoscope in my center. Okay. Right, are they using the exoscope in Tanzania? Is Shuma using the exoscope at all? No, no we, we have not, uh, unfortunately, we have not exoscope now, but I see I'm learning uh, experience uh, by Professor Ipicharian and uh, Albert Sufiano. And I can uh, say we step by step will uh, we'll continue our neurosurgery uh, with, uh, with exoscope in the future, I believe, uh, because uh, exoscope more uh, comfortable and ergonomic uh, than microscope, I think. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the testimony. What's your, what's your... Yeah, yeah, uh, you, you know, I, are you there? Спасибо за отличные познавательные лекции. Go ahead and ask in Russian. Someone can translate. Возникло достаточно большое количество мыслей, которые уже можно будет у нас, скажем так, реализовывать, конечно, при некоторой помощи наших старших товарищей и администрации. Но очень много позитивных мыслей, как бы, как и что адаптировать в наши условия. Now we have many ideas, many positive ideas uh, as for how to develop um, technologies with the help of our administration, authorities, and uh, their collaborators. So, book, many other. My pleasure. What do, we have, what do we have now? Lunch or something else? Now we have lunch. Okay, excellent. And at three o'clock, we continue with the presentation of exoscopic equipment in the OR. Yeah, for sure. So I would like all of you guys to come to the OR and see how what we can do with the exoscope, okay? Are we going to wait to see the presentation tomorrow, right? Okay, I guess we're done for the day, correct? Okay. It's up to you guys to wrap it up. John? Yes. John, can you hear me? Yes. Half an hour later, we are going to the OR for a demonstration on the exoscope. Okay. So we will we will log in again half an hour later, and we will have lunch first, and then we will break for lunch, and after that we will uh, go ahead and uh, show the capabilities of the exoscope uh, with everything together in the Tumen OR. I'll be doing this. And uh, it it will be uh, broadcasted live. Okay, very good.
Hello, Nick, are you there? Oh, I'm doing some things out here. And we've got free advertising for neurosurgical TV.
Hello, can anybody hear me? Лаборатория готова. Oh, I, we're here waiting. Sure. I, how are you doing? We're here waiting. <laughs> Okay. 
So uh, we will just So, uh, we will just... Oh. Such, uh, the 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 Hello, hi, can you hear me? I I can't hear anything. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Коллеги журналисты, просьба пройти сюда, мне нужна фотография только с участниками для э, сертификатов. Коллеги журналисты, вот сюда пройдите, да. Кадры, вот сюда, да, 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 да. Спасибо. Okay, so you can see we are first focusing on a, on a small cavity. Can you see that? Yes. So I have a steel. 
if there is anything on this I suppose I unlock and I bring it here and I see there is something here. Okay? Excuse me, I, 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 we're not seeing, we're not seeing the camera. We're not seeing the camera. See? Yes. No. No, we're not. We're just we have a Did view of the view. And I zoom it in. Okay. You wanted to, to see the picture in the in the mic microscope, correct? See, we're not seeing the camera. We're not seeing the camera. See? Yes. Amazing, right? Yeah. Okay, bring it to the center. Okay. Bring it to the center. And then zoom it again. Okay. Lock. Want to look further into that? Excuse me, I, we're not seeing the camera. We're not seeing anything in, in the camera. <laughs> you see the vision to the aqueduct? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. You can see. Yes. And I can. Hey. Uh, we need to see the exascope Sorry. screen. I, we're see? not seeing the exascope it's screen. Really amazing. Now I go off the zoom, and you will suddenly see what a microscope can see. Then I come back. I have to see this depth where so I unlock, I bring it to the center. This is where I want to see, okay? So, zoom it in. Can you see the zoom? Can you see a hair there? No wonder it goes. Hair and pocket. And can you see? No, we, that no, we can't see anything. We can't see anything. I we need to see. You can't see anything. No, no. Can somebody put the zoom on to the zoom? Zoom is working. Uh, Professor uh, Bennett. Uh, Professor Bennett. Here, do you care? Yeah, I'm seeing a picture of you, of you and uh, your associates. I'm not seeing a picture of the a microscope. I mean the exoskeleton. Okay, now I come back. Somebody zoom. Put a zoom on the phone and then show it. Uh, so this is an angle, this is a hole that is, this is another cavity that is at 90 degree to the, uh, this this cavity. Can you see that? No, can't see anything. Just see you in the room. Okay, can somebody zoom on the, put a zoom on the phone and show the screen to him, please? Focusing here. John, we will take care of that right now, okay? Okay. This is exactly what I am. Can you see? Not yet. Yes, I put it to the center. Oh, I see. Uh, now I go fast. Okay. Oh, I see. I, I think I see what you mean. Okay. Hold on. Let me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can you see how beautiful this is? Is it? it? Okay. Okay, that's a little better. A little better. Yeah, so now I come back. Now we'll go into another hole, okay? Another cavity. No, I can't. You see a cavity here? Oh. Now you're starting to see? <laughs> yes? Yes. <clears throat> All right. So now I want to look into that. Can you see? Uh, looking at the, it. Yeah, the arm is in the way. The arm of the microscope's in the way. Yeah. Can you see how I looked into it? 
Uh, yeah, not, not, not a great view, not a great view. Now I'm zooming in. Okay. Focus. Zooming in. Okay. Zoom out. Now let us say I want to look at another angle. And all this time, my hands are not touching the scope. I want to look what is here, okay? So, I bring it, I unlock, bring it here, lock, bring it to the center. Lock. Bring this to the center. Lock. Lock again. Focus. And see the beauty of that. I can look here. I can look here. I can look. Inside that, and I can look here. And if I want, I can look here also. Can you see? Not locked on the target. This is extreme. Contralateral side. Contralateral side. Okay. Now I go here. This point, I have to move the scope, but you see that how much. How much I'm able to look into, then now I zoom. Focus. You see? Work. Now I come here. You tell me where should I go without touching the scope. Okay? Focus on the center. Now, which wall do you want to see? You tell me which wall do you want to see? Medial wall. Medial wall? Yeah. Meaning? Uh, which wall? Well, what? Which wall do you want to see? I mean, we have seen here, we have seen inside of here, we have seen the aqueduct, we have seen the contralateral side. Anything you want to see. I'm going to give you access without touching the scope. So I'm going to first, and then I'm going to focus and zoom there. Anybody want to tell me where you want to go? Let us say, let us say the contralateral this side, okay? So I bring the scope first to here, okay? And then I lock it. Once I lock it, I'm going to change my angle. See how beautifully I can see that one. I bring it here, focus it. And then I increase the zoom. Focus. And increase the zoom. I want to bring this, let, let us say this perforator into the into the focus. I want to bring this perforator into the focus. I brought it. And now can you see that? You see the reflection of light between the two planets? Oh, Can you see the reflection of light? Yeah. You see how oh, I can handle that perforator? That is in microns, that is not even in millimeters. Okay? That is in microns. 
you will see when I go back on the zoom, you will see how small it is. You understanding? You are able to see that? I'm going to zoom up and then you will start seeing that. You see? Yeah. So this is exactly what you can do with the exoscope. It's magic. Okay. If you learn how to make it dance, and if I let us say if I come down on the zoom. Let us say there is a small vessel here I want to focus. So what I do is first step, bring it in the center, right? And then after that, I focus. And then I zoom. I want to fade from the other side. So I lock. Unlock and bring it. Unlock, bring it to the center. Zoom. Focus. And then zoom. Okay, and then you see can take it out. You see? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So this exoscope has to dance with you. Okay? So she has to dance and then you can operate. Okay? It's beautiful. Anybody want to try? Can I try? Yes. Okay. You like it? Many <laughs> This camera on my boot. Mm -hmm. So the exoscope comes from behind for me. Boom, wherever I move. So, Focus yeah, you want me to talk some? Look at me. Yes. Do you want me to take off the mask? Take off, take off. Of 
Скажите, пожалуйста, вот насколько а, такое оборудование, такой крутой экзоскоп а, облегчает работу и ракетой помогает? So neurosurgeons for the last 50 years were stuck in the microscope. The microscope is just a set of prisms and lenses mounted with an automated arm. And it is 15 years, but the microscope uh, is slowly becoming digital. There are some leading companies who are taking an effort to make it more digital. Mm -hmm. But then a digital camera, which is 4K and 3D, mounted on a small arm is much mm -hmm. more better. It has much more maneuverability. The digital image can be manipulated in a way to a certain dimensions. So uh, it is the nature. It is already there. And it is What new opportunities and new surgeries have been uh, with the help of Exascope that we were not able to use with Microscope? Well, the first thing in, when mm -hmm. it comes to using the microscope, microscopes of this era are very capable. So the first thing that we got to was the bypass, which where you can increase the size of Mm -hmm. It is a magnification to very, very high limits mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. stereo depth. So uh, this was not something which was ever seen with the microscopic data. And also, we can add things, digitally enhance the images. The digital images, we can enhance these images. Increase, increase stereo depth. These are all possibilities. But I would say bypass small keyhole approaches. Uh, yes, different yes, angles. Yes, yes. These are the biggest solutions. And of course, mm. with the ergonomic, because the earlier the surgeon had to mm. be married to the yeah. IC, and the assistant was standing in a very mm. awkward position. Okay. Right now, the two people are just sitting looking at a screen. <laughs> Микрососудистая анастомоза, поскольку для нас придание сосудов часто не давало возможности с помощью микроскопа увидеть и отразить Также так называемые кипы, то есть небольшой доступ к ограничению. Это стало возможно, что и на разных в Индии тоже в Индии сейчас разрабатывают производят такие Yes, uh, so 
There is this company called Sana with whom we are working and they produce both the exoscope as well as the endoscope. We started work with them about a couple of years back and now they are already producing the first generation selling yes, it in the market. They hope to have the same certification by May or something. And they actually have already working on the second generation which is robotic glasses with the virtual reality classes so that we can put mixed reality in the product. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a robot. It's not a robot. It's a robot. It is a universal robot arm. And then you have a 3D 4K camera. So this is a robot mated to a 3D 4K camera. And it is, in a way, it's a second generation because it's not uh, electromagnetic breaks. It's a robot in this second generation. But uh, maybe the, you can say the third generation of the cobalt, where, which means it will be a collaborative robot. Да, Сейчас он будет питом. Внизу лаборатория. 
там тоже элемент управления все есть, но только вот этой функции нету. Вот эта, вот эта функция. Вот эта функция. Вот, вот. Лог, и вот Вручную такую. Вот тут робот. Вот так вот все, например, сделать. Это нереально. Чтобы все это уходит с объекта. Вот, например, давайте посмотрим вот, вот, на водопровод. Да, Внутри вот эти стенки, да? Не было такого. Здесь есть топ. Здесь топ робот. Сможем остановить. Ну, вот еще одна. Вот, что я говорю. Вот эти. Все. Теперь у нас уже в другую позицию. Пожалуйста, работайте. Да, вы не даже вот так говорите. Не а он на два бедных вещей. А он на это мы сейчас считаем? Нет, нет. Нет, так Коллеги, я хочу сделать фотографию, Юрий Алексеевич, общую, как вы смотрите на меня, это для сертификата. Надо, вот. чтобы не мы смотрели, а чтобы вот это было поле общее. А, я я уже такие сняла, но я хочу не побольше. Можно, а да? Да. Потому что они все поселят. Ну, отлично. Пожалуйста. Да, сейчас. А что мы сделаем обязательно тоже? А я потом все равно все фотографии объединю, будет ссылка. Да. Сейчас пять. Так, сделаем. Сейчас мы картинку красивую сделаем. Давайте. Юрий Алексеевич отвлекся. Сейчас, сейчас, сейчас. Он старается очень. Да. да. Готовы? Смотрим вот сюда, коллеги. Сюда. Я не равна. Я не равна.
So tomorrow we are still the yeah. case, so we can yeah. it is a good holder. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. You guys designed it? Uh, this is a special door. door, door yeah. Yeah. This is a I have the door. door. Uh, yeah. I have the door. This is carbon. 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 Yeah. Carbon. Yeah. What is possible? Possible uh, city yeah. it is coming. Yes, yes, after. Yeah. Maybe the yeah. ah. Oh. I have to learn yeah. the city perfection from me. This is how many slices? Uh, uh, 64. 64. Oh, we have 192 and uh, we want oh. to get perfection. Yeah. Well, it's very possible it's reparated. Uh, reparated. Also, my name is city. It comes rail. Ah, okay. Rails. 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 Yes, we'll go on. I think maybe it's right. Maybe tomorrow it's right. Uh, maybe tomorrow it's right. Perfusion. Okay. <laughs> She's still not very happy, yeah? Uh, no. It's not as good as, uh, the moment is not as good as, you know, that I agree. Uh, but it's because it's a universal law. Yeah. But yeah. the robots, like the Frank Amica, is much better. Frank Amica is mm -hmm. Frank Amica is, uh, I have to just touch. There you go. It's uh, called intuitive. To do control, so I just touch, touch like that, goes starts going as soon as I touch. And if I push like that, it start going there. If I stop, stops. So it has motors which sense the pressure and it starts moving automatically. It's called intuitive control. Mm -hmm. Most of most of the equipment, uh, on the construction, on no need to unlock. Oh. <laughs> Just touch. If we uh, use more magnification, uh, the uh, movement it's moving slowly. Yes. So with AI, we can make sure that when I when it when I am at very high magnification, mm -hmm. even if I touch, the movement becomes very slow. Yeah. Yeah. Here it's all movement sure. with me with him. I don't move at all. So I show you. You just look into the screen. I take a three D, take a glass, and uh, I show. You. Yeah. 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 I'm going to stand here. Exactly. It's for you. Okay, yeah. and now no. No. is it not okay? No. Uh, it's because it's uh, it has to be mm -hmm. better. But much more. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. going to bring it now. I'm going to make you look all around. Okay, yeah. we're going into that hole. Okay, first, I'm going to zoom in. Okay. And I'm going to look to this side, right? My hands are with you. Okay. okay. Look to this side. I'm going to look to that side. And I'm going to come back. And I see a hole there. Can you see the hole? Sure. Uh, where at the center is. Can you see the hole? I'm going to focus there and I'm going to look into that. A little bit not comfortable with the fight because it's changed during the revolution. Shapes. Yeah. So, Possible to uh, you see that, serve the same quality of light because during the movement, the uh, light is ah, changed. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I, I completely understand. Generally, it should not happen like that. But okay, I'm going to focus inside. Can you see that thing inside? Sure. Structure side. 
para zoom in. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a very good friend. But you see that? And when I zoom out, you see. Yes, yes. Now, now I, I also use a lot of endoscope work, so it's okay. Now I'm going to go into another hole, okay? But still now I am not touching the scope, you see. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the thing. But you see how I have gone? Now I, I zoom out again. And I go to the other side. The other side. So, whenever you never digital. Yes, but uh, well, it's uh, it's not meant to be uh, purely an access book. You see. Now the other panel. Okay. This is what it can do. Research and it's truly amazing. There's this robot, what it can do with this kind of, uh, you know, uh, Kinabo, if I had magnifications like this and stereo depth like this and work on distance a little bit more and you take off that eyepieces, maybe next generation, you don't have to work too much on it. Can you move the camera in front of the screen? Would that help? Yeah. Yeah. Is it all right? Only the screen. Yeah, can you move it in front of the screen, the camera? Lights? John. Yeah, move. John. Can you move? Can you move the camera in front of the screen? Yes, 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 yes absolutely. So, yeah. So, John, I'm going to, I'm going to zoom, zoom out. Okay. You see, it is zooming out. Yeah. The resolution is not great, obviously. Yeah, because no it's way. 3D, John. It is 3D screen. It is a 3D screen. That is a problem. Maybe oh, you can show it there. Alia? Is, is there okay. any way you can Hello, plug in? Is there yeah, any can way you, you can... Oh, uh, that's a little now? better. A little better, but still not very good. There's no way you can directly plug into it, into the screen? No way? another cavity and then do you know what I mean I right plug it in directly to the screen the computer uh, well they are not connected we are using a, t I mean, uh, a camera of a uh, computer yes uh, yeah uh, Bennett, uh, now we go to the cadaver lab from cadaver lab it is possible possible uh, from uh, from exoscope to, to by zoom to see uh, to see the yeah, picture clearly, yeah. we can see the exoscope screen yes, clearly. Yes, yeah, yeah. exoscope in laboratory. In laboratory. Yeah. In okay, laboratory, we'll it's possible, possible, possible. Uh, see uh, from exoscope by zoom. Okay. Okay. Good. Can now we do that. Are you going there? Are you going? Are you going now or when you're doing that lab? 
yeah. Kamara, we are going yeah. now. We are going go now, now. Now, go now. Oh, okay. We'll see. We'll see how it does. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Give it a shot. See you, John. See you soon, John. Well, how 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 soon? I maybe ten minutes. Less oh, than okay. ten minutes, John. Okay. Less than ten go. minutes. Okay. Good. One little below. Okay. Go to the right.
Yes, yes. So the white home is now mounted on this mitaka arm. It's called the point setter arm. It's a pneumatic arm. So once I unlock it, I can put the white home anywhere I want. And then I can see, and there are controls of the white home. Ah, you have you have the control. So I can always bring the white home. to focus, to zoom and to, to move. So you can see here, you can focus. You want me to move? One second, yeah, I am keeping it here. Can't see anything, I. Uh, the white home is uh, obviously it's a previous generation compared to the S Club AOS. It is uh, it doesn't have that much zoom or stereo depth as the S Club AOS, but the white home is an excellent uh, exoscope. Yeah, you can focus now. Down. Yeah, okay. So I'll bring it down a bit more. Yeah, so you want the working distance a little bit up. So I'm going to focus on a hair. Yeah. It's excellent. Okay, do you have a micro instrument that I can use? Yeah, yes, excellent. All right, so we are going to focus on, can we zoom a little bit more? You can move also, uh, okay. Maybe I'll choose the center here. You can see a double tuft of hair here. I can come to the center of the field, yeah. So you can see a double tuft of hair here. In fact, there are three hairs. Uh, increase the light a bit more. Or I may need to take the background lights off. Yes, yes, that's brilliant. So I'm cleaning that off. And I'm going to cut off one of this. There are three of them there.
trying to separate them. Yes. Now I'm going to cut off one of them. Yes, now I'll cut off the second one. And I'll cut off the third one. Yes, you can see. One, two, three. Can you focus more, zoom on more on that? That's a maximum zoom. Yeah, so this is the capability of the initial exoscope, but with uh, Esculap AOs, it's uh, probably the second generation exoscope. This I could, I would call it the first generation. This is just a camera mounted on a, a pneumatic arm. The pneumatic arm, as I release the pneumatic arm, I can bring it anywhere I want. So uh, and then me, I, can lock you hear it me? there. Can you hear me? And I then can... she can start focusing. Once she starts focus and zoom. Can anybody hear me? Can anybody hear me? We need to change the camera. We're not All able right. to see the camera. Yeah. Now, we'll try the same thing again. There are two of them. And then the second one. So this is what you can do with the exoscope. You're looking at a screen and the good thing is your, if you have an assistant, he's also looking at the same screen and you can move around here. Yeah, so if I wanna come between the bisection of these two, you can zoom in for me a little bit. That's the maximum zoom. Okay. So I come at this level. take out one of these. So that's uh, an exoscope for you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hey, finally.
Much better. Hello? Anybody there? Oh, we lost the audio. And anybody here? Dr. Porsab, can you hear me okay?
¿Qué es eso? Uh, okay, so now we are going to do a small approach and uh, we train to do a suture on the dura mother. So we done an approach. Now we find a dura. And then okay, so our then participants will do a suture on a dual. I will give you a. We train to do a suture on the dura mother. So we got an approach. Now we. Be careful. Find a dua. And then so our participants will do a suture on a approach. I will give you a. We train to. So we got a now we I can make a zoom for you. I'm trying to find your instruments at first. Make a projection of your suture. Okay. So here you can see the uh, urine matter incision, yes. Um, oh, no. Try to find the... Make a projection. Let's see. Look, 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 sorry. Look, look. On this side. So here you can see the urine matter incision, yes. 
Pero que no se llama. Careful. No, 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 no. Открываем твердо, ничего дальше не делаем, и можно будет просто прошить. Сейчас вам покажу. Так, вот таким вот образом. So now you need to do a C H M or a dual matter, okay? You need to find uh, two edges of the dual matter and do a C H M. No, 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 don't open it. So now we need to do a CH and one of the two matters, okay? You need to find just uh, two edges on the two matters. You need to see on your screens. What happened? No, 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 don't open it. So now we need to do a CH and one of the two matters, okay? Да нет, просто я поглянул, что я вот так стою здесь. Может быть, нет, нормально, нормально, не трогай. Посмотрите на там. Снова начинается стрелка. Может быть, нет, нормально, нормально, не трогай. Ты посмотри, если вам сложно, можете просто тогда посмотреть, взять цепь, если не захочется. И аккуратненько посмотреть, раскрыть участки твердой мозговой оболочки.
Раз, два, три. Ну, не столько опустить, что нет. Ну, можете пошить себе. Если кто-то из участников хочет пошить твердую мозговую оболочку, можете попробовать. Да, я сейчас попробую, да. Продолжить. 
और ठीक है कौन नहीं बता Да, завтра будет оперативное вмешательство по поводу аневризма средней мозговой артерии. Полный аневризм. Вот я пошел давай и вы Будете шить. Говорили? Сейчас вам отдам. Там участники, кто хочет, можно посетить твердо, можно было бы либо поздно. Просто в пакете можно кстати, посетить, попробовать работать с эндоскопом. Это очень полезный навык. Уважаемые участники, вот получается, что повторяю, можно пошить твердую мозговую оболочку. Да. Держите, вот в таком темпе продолжайте хорошо шить. Помимо того, что я сейчас большую экскурсию еще проведу для вас, что здесь есть, чего нет. Ну, наверное, на русском языке сейчас. Да. Итак, это у нас 3 d кадаверная лаборатория, или, как профессор называет, на лабораторию это инкубатор российских звезд мировой энергии. На сегодняшний день у нас мы занимаемся как на животных материалах, так и на 3D-моделированных материалах, и, соответственно, конечно же, кадаверные материалы. Кадаверные материалы у нас, в принципе, достаточно в большом количестве. Мы используем их для научной деятельности, написания статей, и секции различные варианты и все то, что. Все фотографии и заливки, которые вы видите, это все наши препараты, мы заливаем их специальным силиконом и работаем. Соответственно, отели красным цветом, вены синим цветом. Также совершенно недавно у нас была конференция, которая называется «Билатеральная классическая ламина пластика», и нам приезжал а, доктор из Мексики, который смоделировал вот такую вот замечательную модель. Тот тотально имитирует как желтую связочку, так и твердую мозговую оболочку, и, собственно говоря, артерии. А, на этой, эти модели можно совершенно спокойно пилить, пластик подходит под пиление без перегревания пели и всего прочего. Вот буквально в сентябре у нас прошел курс, курс по биотральной классической пластике. А силиконовые модели мозга головного также у нас 
активно используется. Чаще всего мы буквально недавно создали модель для эндоскопической внутрикультурной кистомии, причем эта модель состоит из оперативного лечения. Первое это септостомия, то есть септы можно совершенно спокойно пунктировать для соединения для желудочка, для того желудочка. Вторая модель можно провести оперативное лечение по пластике. И третье это, конечно, эндоскопическая внутрикультурная а В этой модели ее просто не видно. Но это голова ребенка настоящего, которому по-настоящему проявляет оперативное лечение. У него есть там базилярная артерия, которая пульсирует, третий нерв, третья пара чудных нервов, которая проходит между а, задней мозговой и верхней мочковой артериями. Ну, в принципе, они хорошо достаточно визуализируют артерии, пульсируют, а в животом подается. А, более того, что касается... Вот, у нас есть полимерные принтеры, в том числе на них ординаторы отрабатывают свои доступы. У нас есть протезиоса. А здесь мы делаем различные варианты доступа. Тириональный, причем здесь тириональный доступ с удалением переднего наклоненного доступа. В том числе ретросигмоидный доступ и парасогитальный доступ. Вот на этой голове был использован. А что еще и для чего вообще? Ну, понятно, что для дела, что для обучения мы используем данные модели, но еще мы используем для проведения оперативных лечений. Наиболее широко используется, а, используется предопринтирование у нас для того, чтобы закрыть дефект черепа. Изначально у нас, получается, распечатывается а, принтер. На принтере, 3D-принтере распечатывается модель. И дальше мы обрабатываем самую пластину под тот размер, который нам необходим. Обработка идет и интерактационно. По сути, мы приходим в операционную. У нас там стерильная пластина, стерильная как модель. Это, кстати, очень важно именно стерилизовать модель, потому что интерактационно, по крайней мере, у вас не возникает таких функций, у меня интерактационно возникает. Мне надо понять, как эта голова располагается. И все-таки иногда бывает так, что пластинка... мне надо примерить, как вот формировалась пластинка. Это очень важно, если я стерилизую репутацию. А, ну, это вот получается закрытие дефектов черепа, различные вариации. И, конечно же, это ранее если особенно. А, также используется очень широко 3D-моделирование у нас в центре именно для э, крайнего синоскоза. Понятное дело, что здесь плаги цифалии, это, в принципе, сложно крайнего синоскоза, изолированные синдромами, всего там и шла. Но так или иначе, э, ну, особенно у нас, молодые специалисты, нам необходимо понимать, как это можно правильно передать. Поэтому предоперационно либо распечатывается один в один модель перепа, либо размер дальнейшего распечатывается, и дальше мы уже тогда моделируем. А более того, есть ну, программы для моделирования, благодаря которым мы вот просто можем видеомонтаж сделать того, как мы планируем на этот, ну, провести оперативное лечение без распечатки. Если это прям сложный, а множество на экране очень сложно, тогда мы, конечно, подберем череп ребенка, пилим его и дальше уже работаем. Используется широко. Вот, кстати, недавно была конференция по основанию по спалбейс хирургии. И вот здесь есть, вот мы лично вместе с доктором делали, точнее, у нас есть инженер. Вот. Обычно вся работа подобного плана проходит в коллаборации инженера и а, доктора нейрохирурга. То, что хочет нейрохирург, исполняет инженер. Ну, то есть это все вместе происходит в коллаборации. А здесь есть модель ретросигноид транслигринтный доступ. Здесь есть лицевой есть метод. То есть мы прямо таки четко прорисовываем для инженера, инженер не понимает, мы инженеры четко прорисовываем. Четко прорисовываем инженеру а, каналы, где проходит свой нерв, где проходит свой какие-то важные органические средства. Это все зависит от инженера, это не важно. Это не ответственность для хирурга. А дальше уже инженер распечатывает по нашим запросам. А что здесь еще представлено? Здесь представлены пластикаты, но, в принципе, наверное, они есть везде, ну, как в качестве модели. Их мы здесь не делаем. Вот, не делаем, потому что у нас нет специального оборудования для производства. 
Конечно же, у нас есть сухие черепа, некоторые черепа мы, вот этот череп в сентябре был изготовлен, изготовлен нашим молодым доктором, доктором он на, его прямо таки практически варил, чтобы сделать его ну, потому что берег сладорода, он использовал берег сладорода для того, чтобы ну, сделать череп. Также, что у нас есть, у нас есть вот или полторы две назад у нас прошел мастер-класс по реверсализации головного мозга, но это был локальный чистый мастер-класс, и Гибосидвейт Маркин, это заведующий от лаборатории этой, и вот это вот он автор, это все передать. Каждый стол у нас оснащен микроскопом, Ламина пластика делали на эту конференцию не было. Живую. Я была в одной информации. Давайте, может, кто-то еще хочет пошить, работать с экзоскомом. Вы устали, я расскажу, да? Вот это такая вот палочка. Вот у нас вот план, вот 